Oops. Let's try it. just happened. There we go. We're going to do our QOD as a, as a poll. We've got crunchy, creamy, or a third option, blech, in case you don't like peanut butter, you know. Some people don't like it. I did get a haircut today. I got freshened up today. Smooth is the only... Is the only way to go. Ah. I'm going to add my own option on there. Extra crunchy. Love the crunch. I will make a crunchy peanut butter sandwich and I'll put potato chips on it for extra crunch. There's never enough crunch. Never. Never. Hey, we do me a favor and uh, punch in and test that mic out real quick. We didn't get to do it beforehand. That's a lot of crunch. It is a lot of crunch. I'm I'm down. I'm down for the crunch. I, it may be weird, uh, but I put chips on pretty much all of my sandwiches, and Candy Thunder just puts them on for me by by default. If she makes a sandwich now, they're just already chips on it. It's fantastic. I'd like to open up a uh, a deli where every sandwich has chips on it, and like that's the shtick. The shtick is the chips. Ham? Wait, ham. Andrea says ham. We have a goal of 3K bolts to get Candy Thunder up here to start the show off today. We got Angel K, Carol Jaworski, Diana Galvin, Lauren B, Diana Galvin again, Donna DJ, and Ann Bracker, Jelly Five, Fane, Gracie, Janine, Amber, L Hickey, Grim, Fane again there, MJ Newcomb, Diana, Grim again there, Jesse, Katie, Jesse, Katie Trick, or Jessica Dietrich. If I said it right, would be a good way to go. Jenny on the block, Chris, Amberella Hickey, Brannigan Minardi, and Ellie Dove. Thank you so much, Tanya D. Uh, Jessica Dietrich. Uh, I'll get it right the first time I see it someday. Someday. Donna DJ, thanks so much for the love there. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, have you ever tried fluff on it? Um, what do you mean, fluff? What, what, what do you mean? Like the... Are you talking about like the marshmallow fluff? Like the jet puff kind of stuff glitchy yeah uh I'll see what I can do here it's probably not a lot that I can do though I think I've got everything shut down that I can let's hope that it chills out <sighs> Time delay. Let me try this. I am. Um, is that better whenever I switch over to the scene? Is it just struggling with that one scene? It's struggling with extra graphics. Okay. So we'll just we'll just stay here for a minute. We'll just stay away from our graphics since that's uh, that's kicking it in. Hey, do you mind killing that heat in the back? Um, yeah, so we'll we'll just try to stay away from graphics whenever we can. Sometimes it just gets laggy with that. It shouldn't because those are all downloaded locally. But you know, uh, what <laughs> what would alive with me be if it if it was not riddled with tech gremlins? Right, like it just wouldn't be. It, it's it's like it wouldn't be me. It wouldn't be me at all. Uh, we are 870 of 3K right now on that bolt goal to get Candy Thunder up here. Um, Francis was trying to rewatch Monday's live. So the Sunday, Monday lives actually get left up just for the YouTube members. Typically, we take the, that down from private. Wednesday lives do get posted next day. The Monday, Sunday lives typically don't. They just get held for, for members as an extra perk there. So that's... Uh, 
that's the one thing we have. It looks uh, it looks like it's smooth on my end. So if you're still seeing glitches, you might have to, to pop out and jump back in. Elizabeth made your first live. Heck yeah. Look, and you're already a member of the storm. So look at that. That's freaking awesome. Uh, today, the QOD, because it is National Peanut Butter Day, is creamy or crunchy peanut butter. And little known fact, we live near uh, George Washington Carver, the... Uh, the is it a state park is is it officially it's a, it is a state park george washington carver it's a national park okay so he is like the godfather of the peanut george washington carver so you could say you know it all started right here actually started in candy thunder's hometown not too far from here so heck yeah uh so crunchy or creamy it is a peanut butter stuffed conversation today we'll keep it there coming up we have stories about Ruined lives, or not, irrational in-laws, selfish vacationing husbands, roommate bathroom etiquette, feuding spouses, wedding dress dilemmas, petty revenge texts, texts, why is that hard to say, petty revenge texts, it's like the XTS is very hard to enunciate in there, a spicy reward story, and of course, cake, also, did you include that, that one gigantor one, there is... How long did it end up being? We got to get the punch in from Tony Spark here. Uh, so we were sent a story. Was, we were sent a story, right? And sent a link in a follower submission. And it is one of the craziest stories that Candy and I have ever read to where our reaction was like, what? Multiple times. And I think it comes out to like 21 pages. So it's a very long story if people are, I don't know if that's what they're in. Size 14 font, too. So let's, <laughs> let's make sure that's in there. But it's it's a wild, uh, wild story. So we have a monster of a story. Yes, I am recording. Thank you guys for uh, for the reminder. I greatly appreciate that. Look at everybody taking care of me, making sure that I'm recording. I am. Uh, we got that. So we got that done. Uh, so we do have this this family, not family, good God. I saw something in chat. We have this massive, massive story that is going to work its way in, in here at some point as well. So that's going to be a really good time. I did see we have a new member of the storm up here. Rhonda Cummings. Heck yeah. With the auto renew uh, subscription there. Feeling like a Pisces as well. Welcome to the gosh heck and fam. Glad to have you with us here. Um couple of notes before we start diving in on stories. The new podcast with... Bree, a.k.a. Sassy Merlot, dropped this past Sunday, and we are trying to get the new Thunder and Spark episode that we recorded on Monday, question mark, done so we can have it published this coming Sunday. So uh, we're chipping away on that and trying to get it done. Piano Man Part 3 plus the entire three-part story is out on YouTube, Spotify, and more. It is also out now as an ebook, a paperback, and we even have a hardcover. You can check the uh, the link in the Linktree link in my bio. The top link on Linktree is now takes you to a store page that has all three of those available to you. I still don't have mine in hand yet, but some people do have their paperback copies in hand. Uh, and it's, it's really cool. We'll see where it goes. Who knows? Uh, we have... Uh, if you have not subscribed already on the YouTube side, we have recently upped the frequency of how often we post there. So it's a really good time to subscribe. You also get more posts per day, more frequently there. So uh, if you aren't subbed there, definitely go do that. Uh, lastly, we have gotten emails from followers about fake Dusty Thunder accounts, messaging people and asking for money and doing all kinds of crazy shit. We will never DM you and ask for money. Uh, and if you see anything that looks a little bit fishy, it's probably not us. This account at Dusty Thunder underscore is the only TikTok account that we have. So if you see something like that, please report those accounts to TikTok, not to us. We can't do anything about it. Um, when we report them ourselves, they kind of don't do anything. So. If you can, just do us a favor and report those directly to TikTok. That would be greatly appreciated. Denise, welcome to the gosh heckin' fam. I saw uh, Angel sent a bunch of gifted subs out there uh, again here. Heck yeah, Terabyte, a uh, question mark, Time Waster, Candy CLKB, and Rosebud. Welcome to the gosh heckin' fam, courtesy of Angel. Thanks so much for the love there, Angel. Greatly appreciate that. And as a reminder, no spoilers, please. If you heard the story we're reading, don't spoil it in chat. You'll get your butt muted. Heck yeah. Uh, yeah, Brennan, not opposed to that. Brennan, not, not opposed to a collab. 
I think they they might have recently followed us too. So we we may have to get in touch with them. Uh, Gemma, Chris Museum Girl, thanks so much for the shares. MJ Newcomb, thanks for the share there as well. Tammy, Tracy, Daisy, Southern Country, Feeling Like a Pisces, Andromeda Amber, Mrs. M. Bash. We're at 2250 of 3K on our uh, on our lightning bolt goal right now. Um, Donna DJ, A Flower, Boo Boo, Jasmine, Cup of Tea Daily, Candace with an I, A, feeling like a Pisces, Mrs. M. Bash there. Thank you guys so much for the love, TLS, Macy B. And Tammy, I see you there as well. Courtney Christie, welcome to the Gosh Heckin' Fam. And we'll dive into our very first story of the day. This is a follower submitted story and it is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Ruining My Daughter's Life? OP, if you're in chat, you know what to do if you want to claim your story. I have an 11 year old daughter. We gave her a phone two years ago. It was an old iPhone 8 of mine. She mainly uses it for texting with friends and social media. Recently, she's been wanting a new phone because her phone was old and all of her friends have new phones. So I thought the iPhone 13 would be a good option as it's $600, has a good camera slash battery life, and it looks the same as every other iPhone. But she specifically wanted the iPhone 15 Pro Max because apparently it plays console level games and has a 120 hertz display. My daughter is a gamer and has always complained about her phone not being able to game properly as it's old. I did already I did already tell her she'd be getting an iPhone 13, but she's adamant about the iPhone 15 Pro Max, which costs double. Honestly, I think it's a waste of money and said no. My daughter then got mad at me and said that I was ruining her life and that her best friend has the uh, has the 15 Pro Max. My wife is considering getting the phone and telling my daughter it's a big gift. Am I the astronaut? So it's am I the asking out for ruining my daughter's life? And thank goodness we hit this bolt goal because I really want Candy Thunder to get up here and talk about this as well. Uh, <laughs> let's th- let's thank some thank some people here. Uh, it is going to cap me out at fifteen again. Tony Spark, if you don't mind, Tony Spark, if you don't mind getting numbers uh, sixteen and beyond for gifters prepped up, it is still all laggy. Or TikTok. TikTok Live Studio. Still broken. Southern Country. Prep Girl. Laura Lee. Callie Peru. TLS Journey. Adventures with Pam. Angel Love. Fane 13. Uh, We've got John. Oh, John Dennings. Rich Bash. MJ Newcomb. Lady Stormfly. Leo Named Water. Snowman Collector. Sweet Shelly. Terabytes, Donna, 12661, Tanya D, a.k.a. T, Sapphires, Ann and Bracker, Sue Ann, 257, Amber L, Hickey, Tony, Spark, Young and Fuller, Jilly, 55, Call Me Gracie, Candy Thunder, Brannigan Minardi, Ms. Pamela L, uh, Monroshin, Armaniacal, Piotr, Smiley, Abex, Berlioz, Justina, is Jasmine Nyman, Diana5520, Trailcat, Cup of Tea Daily, Teeny Mom, Cat Heathy, and Boo77. Okay. You ready? Oh, I guess I, I need to get the next one set up real quick. Sorry. Let me get the next goal set up right quick, and then we'll get Candy Thunder up here. Boop. What is this going to unlock? A cake story and confetti. This is for... Cake, story, and confetti. Whoop. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Candy Thunder. Okay, so let me get back to the story here. Hi, guys. I used my phone voice. Um, so... So, uh, yeah, my sweet, my sweet and innocent phone voice. Um, so I think if I was willing to buy a new phone, I would say, hey, here's my budget. If you want the iPhone 15, then you need to come up with the additional funds to to get the phone that you want. Mm. Like I'm saying, if I wanted to spend $600 on a phone for you, here's 600, you come up with the rest and then you get the phone you want. But I mean, what, she's 11? She's 11? And she's <laughs> throwing this much of a fit? I'm sorry, I thought she was 16. My realization just happened. Uh, no, uh, you're 11. You get what you get. I mean, your mom, your mom's offer, your dad was offering you a, a $600 phone at 11. I mean, come on. Our 11 year olds got like our hand-me-down phones. Like we didn't like now that they're older, we get them their own devices and their new phones. But 
I, it's 11. I, think, I mean, I don't know. That's I, I very entitled at 11. We have been uniquely fortunate to an extent with with our kids' view of electronic devices, though, because they've never come home saying, oh, my gosh, I have I to agree. have the newest yeah, iPhone that's... because everybody has it. And and we'll even hear we're an Android family. We're we're a we're a Google Pixel family, more specifically. Right. We will even hear uh, hear some po- some reports where people will give them kids will give them shit for for having an Android or using right. a Google Pixel phone. And and the response is so great because it's like, uh, I love it. I think it's better. Whatever. Yeah, they do not get bothered by by what people say about their phones. I mean, I don't know. I just can't imagine. Uh, I don't know how I would respond because our, our kids aren't aren't like this, really. I mean, even Caden has an iPhone, and when even when he was younger, it was never like, I need this or I'm yeah, or this is the end of life. Like he never never once would would have said that. So I give her a wall phone with a hundred foot right. cord grim. There I you think go. this is just trying super... to play games on that kid. Welcome think... back to my generation. <laughs> Wasn't even a cordless; here's... it's stuck to the wall. Here's your Nokia. Yeah, you, you can play know. Snake. You can game and play Snake on your Nokia. Um, I think that you have a bigger issue, and that's that your 11-year-old daughter thinks she's entitled to an iPhone 15 without doing any work to get the iPhone 15, and that your wife is potentially willing to give her what she wants without mm-hmm. any work being done towards this phone. Um, so I think I think that's a, a much bigger problem than whether whether she's going to get a 13 or an iPhone 15. Agreed. And, and I, I mean, there are several red flags in here. The fact that she feels like her life is going to be ruined if she doesn't get this device is. Yeah. And I understand that's a teenager response. However, I think if you look at this and (laughs) and one of the main jobs as a parent being preparing them for independent life later on, preparing them for later on and and learning that you're not always going to have the new hotness all the time. How are you going to cope? How are you going to cope? And comparison is the thief of joy, right? Are you just doing this because your friend has it? Like she says here at the end, or is she truly a gaming enthusiast and that's why she wants it? And if she truly is a gaming enthusiast, why don't we start working on acquiring components to do a custom PC build together? Like, why don't we, why don't we start exploring that passion without just dumping a bunch of money into it? and mean, like there's the new hotness. Why don't we start exploring that and seeing if we can, if we can fertilize that passion and turn it into something that that they can explore further, but have some real reward for by working for it. Like computer right. components, components, computer components, computer components. You you can pick up one at a time, right? You can start building those and gather one small thing at a time by doing some odd jobs, by doing some stuff work, by doing some babysitting, whatever. But that can be a journey toward it, or she can work for the iPhone if that's really what she wants. I don't understand the whole mobile gaming thing because I'm. I guess that's just where I'm at. I'm like, look, if you want a game, like, I mean. Yeah, I think it's different with the new phone's capability. I honestly have no idea, though. I don't know. We're yeah. like old people. Man, talking man, about gaming. Like, I just can't imagine trying to game on something <laughs> that I'm holding right here. It's too small. I, think it's I need different. a big screen. I think it's different, but I think uh, <laughs> I think you need to ask your 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 partner why, why they're giving in um, and just getting her the phone she wants, like, when you guys decided the 13 would be good, like figure out why, what does it say? Yeah. Uh, sorry, I have to go down, but my wife is considering, so it's your wife getting the phone and telling my daughter it's a big gift. Well, yeah, it's a big gift. Well, it's not even, she didn't say like, they didn't say birthday gift or anything like that. Just gift. It's a gift. (laughs) That's well, yeah. Uh, you're not ruining her life by not getting her the 15 Pro Max. That's if that's the question. You are not ruining her life. I promise. But every I think teenagers in general, their life, you know, only exists in that little bubble. So while to her right now, she feels like her life is being ruined. And I said that to my mom. So um, but once I grew up, uh, I realized that my mom was basically always right. And the thing she didn't let me do or the thing she didn't let me have was probably a reason I didn't need those and. And I agree with what she did. And I would probably run things the same way. Oh, my Diet Coke is ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's my timer for my Diet Coke. <laughs> Welcome to my life, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that, that about wraps up that story. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you better run over there before it <laughs> explodes in the freezer. Um, 
I, I think what you said is important where you can offer a path to her her working for this. Um, and yeah, there's a timer because it's in the freezer. And if you leave like it, it in really, too long, it'll explode. I like it really cold. Um, offering a path for her to work for this instead of just giving it to her would be a huge deal because then you're not denying it, right? You're just, just, just straight up shutting it down. I mean, like, hell no. Um, to her, it is clearly important. So offering some kind of path to still achieve it if she wants to work for it, uh, I feel like is, is a really good compromise there that lets you teach a lesson and um and also teaches her some some value value of hard work but also the value of getting what you want and it's not just it's not this entitlement thing where you just say i want it and i want it now and you're ruining my life if you don't give it to me well here's a path here's a solution path right and if you're really passionate about it you'll do it if you're not really passionate about it you won't there's a i think that we walk a a line between like our kids are mildly spoiled. Um, but I think that they also know that like when they get money or when they want to do something, the money that they have to use is going to be their own money. Right. Like if they want to go shopping, um, unless it's for something specific, like a dance or something like, obviously we would pay for that. But if they want to just go shopping out with their friends or whatever, like they have to take their own money and spend their own money to do that. And if they don't have money, they need to figure out a way to earn the money. And I mean, that's just kind of how we, how we run it. So, which I don't think is bad no. for our kids. It works. And they have never, uh, they've never said anything like this. Not specific. We didn't ruin their life specifically, not for getting them for a phone. We've ruined their lives in other ways, but. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. But <laughs> just yeah. by existing. I I, th- I don't know if it's anything that we did bringing them up or if it's just who they are as kids. But I think we, right. we have been extremely fortunate to not run into this kind of thing. Where it's if you don't get me this iPhone or this new hottest thing, then I'm my is life it? is ruined if I if I don't on get a, it now. What's that? What's her name on Willy Wonka? The Veruca. Veruca. Yeah. yeah, this is this is that like you saw what happened in Willy Wonka, so I think I would get a handle on it now. Yeah. And I'm out. <laughs> Bye guys. Candy Thunder, ladies and gentlemen. Thank, Thank you, you, Tater. You want me to bring this back up on this? Yeah, if you don't mind. If you know, are we ruining Navy's life? Pro- Every time she gets her hair fixed, she's her life is ruined. Uh, today, today, whenever I, I dropped her off at uh, at preschool and walked out of the classroom, I ruined her life there. I guarantee that. Uh, she, yes, yeah, but th- that's actually a good point. The way that toddlers react, like you're ruining their life every time you do something that's inconvenient or that they don't like is the way that teenagers react to some things like it is that same kind of of visceral reaction so i think we have to keep that in mind in this case i think if you offer a solution path because if it is a true passion i think fertilizing those true passions however unique they may be is really really important to kids but you don't just give into it you've got to be able to to teach some kind of lesson lesson and teach the value of hard work here as well. So if it is something she's really passionate about and that 120 frames is a big, big deal, she's at least got a way to pursue it. Brie, yeah, I think t- teens are, hell, I'm still learning to regulate. Like, I I know as a teen, like, yeah, I'm sure it's hard. <laughs> Ann says, enjoy your crispy Diet Coke, Candy. It's not ready yet. It's not ready yet. It's bottle, so it's wow. It's good at the alarm and before that. Yeah, the final alarm when you know it's really ready is if you hear something go thunk, and that's like, oh, it's done. It's ready. It's a Diet Coke slushy now. And then you open the freezer and it's like, yep, there it is. There it is. Teens are. Yeah, teens are complicated. I think we've just we've been fortunate with that so far. Um, and I was never I never felt like that as a kid. Like if I didn't have the newest, hottest shoes, I mean, I just wasn't raised with a the huge importance on that kind of stuff. So maybe that kind of flows over with the way that we've been, but, but this is dangerous. I think the precedent that it sets, should you give in mom is very, very, very dangerous. NTA, you are not the ask uh, for, for ruining your daughter's life and for, for not giving into that. I think you might be planting a seed to ruin your daughter's life. If you do give into this. And I think looking at the long-term implications is something you really have to think about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And exploding Diet Coke instead of confetti cannon. That's what we're going with today. Uh, my wife, ladies and gentlemen. My wife. Uh, 
little bit of catch up here on the on the gifter side. We're at 216 to 600 on the, the donut goal right now. A flower, Amanda Nicole Newman, fly on the wall, Nikki Bernal, um, Amanda Nicole again there, Anna Hartman. We've got Ann M. Bracker, Bebop, Tracy Walker, Tony Spark, Janice, Candace with an I, A, Minions Den, C. Larson, Heidi J, Jonna Denning Smith, Southern Country, Ava just purchased an auto renewal subscription. Welcome to the Gosh Heckin' Fam. Amy Howard, MJ Newcomb, Lotus Flower Skies, Sue Ann RT, Mimi KG, Stacey Ann, Laura Goff, Beth Bars, uh, Lisa, is it, uh, ooh, I'm going to mess this last name up, Lisa Mauia? Lisa Mauia, Southern Country, Chuck 84, Justina, uh, Jonna, Candace with an I, A again, MJ Newcomb, Denise, Sunrise Bubbles, thank you guys so much, Janice 24, see you there as well, Crystal Williams, Deb, Melissa, Shanae, thank you guys so much, Amber L. Hickey, I see you there as well, let's rock and roll, you've not had these issues, one last poet either, I guess we either consider ourselves brilliant because we've somehow managed to strategically evade this over time or we're just really lucky not sure which um <laughs> fire and thaw uh ta and sorelia thanks for the shares they're greatly appreciated hey nisi's in the house now too good to see you there get a separate mini fridge fridge at the coldest setting we have a mini fridge up uh, front. Maybe we just need to designate that for her desk. That's a that's a darn good idea. Okay, next story. Here's another follower submission. So, OP, if you were in the house, never mind. It is a follower submission. I was on the wrong story, though. Next story is a follower submission, and this one is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Having No Contact with In-Laws? OP, if you are in chat, you know what to do. If you'd like to claim your story, my in-laws don't talk to us. Here's some context and why this even happened. I, 23 female, and my husband, 22 male, are new parents to an amazing three-month-old. Mother and lie. Mother and lie? Words going to be hard today. Mother-in-law and I had a pretty decent relationship before all of this went down. And since my mom moved across four states, she became another mom to me really fast and we bonded. She told me things like, I knew I wanted you to be my daughter-in-law. Now, she could have easily been blowing smoke up my butt, but whatever. Flash forward to the months leading up to the baby's birth. My baby's birth. Flash forward to the months leading up to my baby's birth, and I had mentioned on multiple occasions that three people were allowed in the room via the hospital protocol and my doctor's wishes. My husband, of course, my sister, my only family here, and my best friend of 12 years. Now, during the shock, excitement, and everything that comes with giving birth, the in-laws didn't know minute by minute what was happening. After the birth, I found out that my in-laws were yelling and harassing the hospital staff, blowing up my husband's phone while I was pushing and complaining about being in the dark. This isn't the first incident, but I had brushed the others off. Anyway, after about three hours, skin on skin is done and we are done with the adrenaline rush. I tell my husband to send in the new grandparents only to be left with silence and no text back. Hours go by. Finally, 3 p.m. the next day rolls around and my husband got a message from his dad talking about how they felt disrespected and how it was rude of us to not say anything to them and that he got fed up and was the one who wanted to leave. Yes, how dare you prioritize focus focusing on pushing that human football out of your body rather than updating somebody about pushing that human football out of your body? It's, it's appalling, OP. My goodness. At the end of the message, he said, I hope your new daughter doesn't treat you like this. I, f I feel like maybe, uh, maybe the dad here when he was a child, maybe got his life almost ruined by not having the, uh, the I-15 Pro Max and, and his parents might have given in. I feel like that's that's kind of the precedent that was set. It's the attitude level. As a new mom of 24 hours, I saw red. So I went to our group chat with all four of us and stated how I was disgusted with their behavior, how the, how the way they treated staff was uncalled for, and how I've kept my mouth shut for long enough and that they weren't going to use my new baby as a pawn to guilt trip and gaslight my husband for being my new support system while giving birth. Needless to say, my mother-in-law didn't like that and immediately responded with, grow the F up, bitch. Oh, no, she did it. Let me get this straight. You're still sitting in the hospital bed. Having just pushed 
a tiny human out of your body. And these people pull this bullshit. You finally bark back and she tells you to grow the F up, bitch. Here's the best part. Who thinks that they still think they're going to have a relationship with the grandbaby? Who thinks that they're still going to be like, when can we come to the hospital? Beep, 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 beep. I'll bring my new iPhone 15 Pro Max. My husband lost it. My mother-in-law said she didn't want anything to do with us. She has lied to family members about us and the things we have said won't tell the whole story and tells the family that they're allowed to see us but don't want to hear about us. Now, I'm a big family person because I don't know most of my family and I want my daughter to have her family and know she has people. I feel like I'm failing her in some way. I wanted to reach out, but I feel like they need to reach out first. We need to all sit down and talk it out and I feel like we owe an apology. I don't know what to do. Wait, wait. It says, I feel like we owe an apology. I I feel like it should say we are owed an apology. You have done nothing wrong here, OP. You are in the NTA category here. Your in-laws. Oh, I don't understand how someone can look at this situation and be like, Updating me should have been your top priority over your own health, over the health of the baby, over caring for your wife who was pushing a human out of her. The top priority should have been messaging me to tell me what you were doing during all these times. I don't know how anybody can have that mindset and be serious about it. It doesn't make any any sense. Candy Thunder says, do not apologize. If you do, it just gives them the right to do it again, which is true. This is uh, this is one of those pivotal moments where I don't know. You're married, OP. Is OP in chat, by the way? This is a follower submission. Nothing yet. Man, I've got questions. Uh, this is one of those pivotal moments where I'm, I'm curious what the wedding was like and if any kind of similar bullshit was started then, because that's usually an indicator that something is going to happen whenever you have your first child and then on and on and on and on this will set a precedent for what threshold of bullshit you are willing to accept and still let them have a relationship with your child we talked about we read some stories like this the other day people don't get to treat the parents like shit and then expect to have a relationship with the child that is not how this works if they want to have a relationship with her they need to show you the adequate amount of respect at minimum and this was not it this was not it. And the fact that they are are portraying you as the villains to the, the general public with this narrative that they've decided that they needed to control and get out in front of everything with, it just makes it that much worse for them. They're only harming themselves. And look at it this way. If someone is willing to do this kind of shit to you while you are having a child, while you are actively birthing a child, is that really somebody that you want your child to be connected with? If that person is willing to do this and not apologize, not make amends for it, not grovel, not earn your respect back, is that somebody that you really want to be in your daughter's corner or child's corner? I don't think it is. And if they want to be a part of her life, they'll choose to be a part of her life by making it right. Do not, do not let them get away with this shit. Because if you do, there will be more shit. Loads of it. And it'll be steaming. Steaming. Uh, Beer Today says, I want to hear how they are presenting the case for being right to the public. Who would back that? I think they're leaving enough of it out to where their narrative is probably something like we showed up. We wanted to we wanted the opportunity to to you know see the baby after she was born. And uh, and the staff there was incredibly rude to us and told us that we didn't get to have any information at all. Can you imagine the gall? They wouldn't tell us a single thing. And then Dave wouldn't answer the text. He was actively shunning us. It's like they decided to just block us out. While the baby was... We don't even know when the baby was born. We assume it was already born. It was probably something like that. Where where they were just, you know, everybody had wronged them at every turn. And they were the victim of every single situation. And, and that was it. 
Cookie says, when someone shows you their true self, believe them and remember. That is a message we've been trying to uh, hammer home with our kids for a long time. And, and a lot of other people that we're connected with too, who have been wronged by really shitty people. How are his parents 11 years old? Avengers with Pam K says, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, it's the whole i it's the whole iPhone 15 Pro Max people thing. It's like that's this is the kind of person that creates later on in life. This is why you actively want to avoid that kind of thing. What I do? Oh yeah, it's gonna be a good one. We've yeah. <laughs> Bearded Apex. I don't, I don't know. They yeah the. Uh, the father-in-law there got the voice of the zebra from Lion Guard. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, Mr. Howell. Yeah, uh, the guy from Gilligan's Island. Yeah. All those, all those uh, parents with small kids out there that have watched Lion Guard know who I'm talking about. The zebra. Three seventy-eight of six hundo on the donuts right now. We are we are pushing forward with those. Becca with the finger hearts. Kelly cards. OMG cookies. Uh, Emily Overton. Katie. Macy B N. Jonathan. Ms. Fiery. Repic. Cookie. T L S. OMG cookie. Hey, we have OMG cookies and we have cookie nineteen seventy-three. I see a theme developing here. Lady Divine. Alex. Maria Goddard. Uh, I Pimbleton. Rebecca 73, Tony Sparks, Just Mags, Holly Elizabeth, Susan RS, Overkill Mill, Candice with an IA, Elizabeth with a lightning bolt like that, Tony Sparks, Sarah Marie, Tammy Lee, uh, Vampire Angel, or Vampire for you. Yeah. Vampiric Angel, maybe. Yeah. Janet Lopez, TLS, Sarah Marie, Southern Country, Best Mommy, 50, TLS. Tammy Lee again, Erica, Christy, uh, Janice, 2014, Crystal Williams, Candice with an IA, Deb, Melissa, Shanae, Amber L. Hickey. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. Georgette, Mariah, see you there too, Sarah Marie, uh, Rainbow Bright, Mike Wells, Jen here, Sarah Marie. Thank you guys. Greatly appreciate it. Duncan says, my brother drove my mom up to see our baby the day after. Three hours. Saw us, congratulated us, drove home. Which is which is like showing up and and showing respects, right? That's that's the I am not encroaching. Um, I'm I'm doing the the thing you should do. And if if somebody wants you to hang around longer, they'll ask you. They'll ask you to. The Grim Reader, thanks for the share there, Kimberly uh, Zylan. Thanks so much for the the share there as well. Greatly appreciate it. T T T T T T T Y H R or H R H R H R H not sure how to say that name uh, says, dude, would you ever do audiobooks? I've actually done a couple back at a few years ago, but the, uh, the story, the fictional story that I wrote piano man is out in sort of an audiobook form on Spotify and YouTube. All three parts are together. It's about three and a half hours long. Check it out. See what you think. And I might, I might be recutting it and remastering it for, uh, for audible too. Cause now it's broken up into actual chapters with, for the book, the ebook paperback and, and hardcover. So I may use that format and revoice revoice the whole thing and uh, put it on Audible as well. Dana, thank you. Greatly appreciated. Uh, let's see here. Proud Army Mom subscribed. Welcome to the Gotcha and Fam. Naomi Leon, uh, Emily, Emily Overton, Lisa, Sarah Marie, Emily Overton again there. Sarah Marie again. Ashley P. Karina Novak uh, Montenegro. Alex, Jen here. Thank you guys so much. Hard case. See you there, too. Thanks so much for the love. Greatly appreciate that. For 20 of 600 on the donuts right now, I'm going to dive into the next story. This one is from the AITA subreddit and is titled, Am I the astronaut for calling my husband selfish for not wanting to go on vacation with us? I, 37 female and husband, 37 male, have been married for 10 years and have three children. Every summer, my family takes a vacation to the beach. I'm not a huge beach fan, but our kids love it. Plus, my mom pays for me and my siblings and our families, so it's almost a free trip, excluding excluding travel there, which usually isn't a huge cost. Some years, only some of my family makes it, but a few years ago, my entire family, 50-plus people, went on a last trip with my grandma. Husband hates the beach, but reluctantly went with us. His behavior was horrendous. He wouldn't leave the condo, bailed on previous booked activities, sorry, 
bailed on previously booked activities that made the cost go up for others and didn't help at all with our kids. It was basically like he wasn't there. And when he was, he was complaining the whole time. I was so embarrassed. My whole family gave me the... Oh. Ugh. I was so embarrassed. My family gave me the pitying stares the whole time and tried to help me as best they could, but it was just a miserable time. Our daughters begged him to play on the beach with him, and he just wouldn't engage at all. Since then, he hasn't accompanied us back. In fact, he will only go on vacations with us if it's a place of his choosing, which is usually hiking. Don't get me wrong, I like to hike, but I'd also like to do other things, and so would the kids. Now onto the part where I called him selfish. We are now planning our trip for this summer to the beach, and once again, he says he will not go. The kids are devastated again because they want him to go so they can swim together and build sandcastles together. He says he just hates the beach and there's no changing his mind. I got frustrated and called him selfish because he never wants to do anything that the kids enjoy. He said I was being a jerk and there's nothing that I can do that will make him like the beach. I told him it's not about liking the beach. It's about spending time with his family. He says we could skip it and go hiking instead if we want to spend time together. So I said we won't be going on any more of his vacations. Now I feel guilty since that was the one thing he would do with us. Am I the astronaut? Edit one. This, yeah. Sorry, edit one. Words are hard today, folks. Sorry, my brain is scrambled. Edit one. I'm not going to deny my kids the yearly beach vacation. They look forward to it all year long, but they are quite literally the only ones without their dad present, and they've noticed. I never badmouth him in front of our children. Edit two. My whole extended family does not go every year. We don't spend the entire time together. There's plenty of downtime and time to be alone. I have suggested new places before and have been vetoed. His family also wanted to do a beach trip. They love the beach, but he refuses. Also, he has no trauma. He just hates the heat and sand and says it's boring. And at three, we do go on smaller hiking trips throughout the year. Every other year, we take a long hiking trip in addition to the beach trip. We can only do that every other year as it isn't a free vacation. He has plenty of vacay time, so that's not an issue. He gets along with my side of the family. Also, in 10 years, he has only gone once. I don't mind before. I didn't mind before kids, but I'd like for him to go every once in a while with us. I do not expect it every year. Okay, there we go. So the uh, the question here was, am I the astronaut for calling my husband selfish for not wanting to go on vacation with us? I am here. We're, we're already there. We're already in NTA land here. We're going to go back to it. This is an NTA for me. Um, Amanda Amanda says he's cheating, hence not wanting to go. I don't know that everything can be defaulted to that, uh, but it's possible. I mean, anything's possible, right? I think this is a case of somebody because he only wants to go on things that he chooses the destination for. I think this is an extremely selfish thing. I think this is somebody thinking, uh, I'll only do it if it's something that I really enjoy doing. And then uh, it's like the rest of the family's tagging along for it, right? He's not thinking about what would be the best thing for the family. What would be the thing that the kids really want to do by his own logic? Could the kids at some point here be like, you know, uh, I, I don't really like hiking. I'm not going to go. Could the kid choose to not go because dad did. It's OK for dad to do. Why can't the kids do it? If there's an educational trip, like we took the kids, all the kids to D.C. before Navy Thunder was born and did like an educational historical kind of trip. And one of them was like, ah, that seems kind of boring to me. I'm going to I'm going to opt out. Would that be OK then? I don't think it would be too dad, but he is he is sending the message that that is OK to do. I think the bigger issue for me here is that he is choosing not to be a dad. He's choosing to be uh a self-absorbed person who only wants to do what they want to do and doesn't want to do anything that the group or family would enjoy more than just him specifically. And that is not being a dad to me. That That is a fail as a dad to me. Uh, it, not everybody's going to agree with that, but I think, I think when you look at these kind of things, it is, you have to think about what the kids are going to find the most enjoyment for, from. And if, if it's not something that you love, who cares? Is it something the kids are going to love? And if so, if the kids are going to love it, love that the kids are going to love it and have fun with them while they're loving it. You don't have to love the sand. You don't have to love the heat. It's only boring if you make it boring by sitting there feeling sorry for yourself. This is a selfish thing to do. And it's a fail as a dad. In my opinion. 
the peppermint witch it's the literal temper tantrum during the first trip that gets me oh yeah we didn't even really dive into that except for reading what op wrote but sitting there (laughs) sitting there in the house or condo the whole time and refusing to do anything but in protest cool guess what You just sent the message that it's okay for the kids to do that later on, too. So if you do go somewhere that they don't like, well, they're going to say, I'll just sit in the room the whole time. Dad did it. Great teachings, Dad. Great teaching. Nocturnal Nocturnal says maybe he got the iPhone 16 Max Pro, too. (laughs) Yeah. The, I mean, really, that is that is where that kind of of behavior heads that that is this is where it ends up as an adult i I, it's just a that sucks and i don't know how to communicate to somebody who is failing in that role as a father right now that it sucks uh, and that they are choosing themselves over their kids and you do have to be a little bit selfish for your own mental sanity right for 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 mental health you have to have some selfish things that are you things to fill your own cup up That does not mean you get to punish everyone else around you in order to do those things. It doesn't mean you get to drain everyone else's cup to fill your own. Maybe he just doesn't want to spend time with the kids at all. Lisa, that's possible. I mean, but he did say that he did say, if you want to spend time together, we can all go hiking. Fifty five donuts to go for cake and confetti. Somehow I saw spaghetti in that comment. Maybe it's because it's Tony's spark. It's like the SP there. And then confetti's right underneath it. I saw spaghetti. spaghetti. You don't throw spaghetti at me. Freshly, freshly cooked spaghetti or just dry spaghetti. It just goes like ding, 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 ding. Hey, we hit it. Nice. Let's do this. (laughs) Carbonara. There you go. We may get a little laggy here. Thank you, Miles. Greatly appreciate that, sir. Probably going to be a little bit laggy with uh, with the graphics there. Maybe if I turn the QOD off, it'll behave. Doubt it. We'll find out, though. What am I doing? I'm lost. Lost. Southern Country leading the board here. Cali Peru, TLS Journey, Chuck 2002, Pirate Pups, Hard Case in the Face. Sweet K84, Sue Ann 257, Overkill Mill, Berlioz, Tony Spark, MJ Newcomb, KTTX Life, Sarah 3, Amber L. Hickey, then Jilly 55, Ann and Bracker, Prep Girl, Candy Thunder, Fyodor, Vampiric Angel, Flower Girl, Jonna Denning Smith, Denise Burkhardt, Katisi, Tanya D, aka T. Lady Stormfly, Diana, 5520, Heidi J, Shay, Shay Nay, Donna, 12661, Emily Overton, Cookie, 1973, TF90, The Real RP, Mags Amazing, Adventures with Pam, Best Mommy, Olivia and Sons, OMG Cookies, Tammy Lee, Ms. Paula L, Angela Hill, Bearded A, Amy, uh, Amy Creatures, Kakahu, Bebop 610. Thanks so much for the love there. Greatly appreciate it. I've got confetti. I can I can feel confetti like in my drawers now. All right, let me get the next one set up real quick. And then we did unlock a cake story with that, right? Yeah. Very nice. Okay, this next one is going to unlock a Tony Spark appearance and a spicy reward story. Oh my god, it's Tony Spark. Um, Okay. Tony Spark. It's everywhere. Being attacked by fatty little shards of paper. Get out of there. Okay, now I can now I can type properly. Tony Spark and Spicy Story for 2K Bits of Fire. 2K Fire. Anne wants to know when we're going to unlock a Tony Spark Reads a Story goal. That's a good question, Anne. February 29th, Candy Thunder says. And Tony Spark says, mm, Nah. Nah. <laughs> Confetti in my hood, too. It's everywhere. 
Yeah, for those who haven't heard yet, uh, February 29th is when we're planning on doing the 24-hour stream. And we'll have a number of guests popping in throughout uh, throughout the time. You'll probably, you'll probably meet both Tony and Ted during that 24-hour stream. We'll have to see what happens there. But we'll have a number of guests coming in and doing some guest readings and reactions, that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah. The real question is, is will you and I survive the like? midnight to 5 a.m. portion when it's you and I sitting in here and how tired we're going to be. Oh, that's my jam. That's my golden hour, man. That's that's that's, that's, that's the time when I am most productive. Well, middle of the night. We'll see what happens. Not anymore. In 2023, I chose sleep more than any year that I have chosen before in the past 10 years. I will say that. Uh, However, whenever I am in night shift mode, I'm still most productive in the middle of the night. Uh, It was somebody said their birthday is leap is leap day. Kirsten Renee, happy, happy gosh, second birthday on the 29th. You'll have to come hang out with us uh, for your birthday there. And when we're doing the 24 hour stream, we're going to be delirious. Uh, but so you'll have to remind us that it's your birthday on that day. We will be absolutely delirious. Lord lady. Wow. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say the name because it's, that's, that's the way it's written there. Lord lady tits of welcome. Shia. Uh, <laughs> says, hey, I just wanted to say I love you guys. I've introduced you to my mother. We bond over AITA. That's freaking amazing. And we've met so many people or heard from so many people who have bonded with family members or friends over this kind of content. I think it's it's freaking amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Still got confetti on the mic. Do I? Oh, my. No, I don't think I do. If I do, it's hidden somewhere. I'm looking, I'm looking at it from every angle. I think there's a reflection. You'll see the the metallic part of it shows a reflection on a lot of different areas. Now you're freaking me out. You're just messing with me. Just messing with me now. Okay, we're already uh, past 11 hundo on that 2K goal. Uh, oh, it's gone now. Okay, the piece just fell. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> because I breathed on it or something, probably. I feel I feel peace touching the back of my neck, though. Yep. It was tickling the back of my neck. That's the worst. OK, uh, next story here is from the AITA subreddit and is titled. Am I the astronaut for using the bathroom, even though my roommate reserved it? D- didn't know you could do that. So we've been living together for over a year now in college, and we have one attached bathroom. My roommate is the laziest person I know and lays down for days on end. He also uses the bathroom for hours every time he goes in and three plus hours when he needs to trim his beard twice a week. It doesn't take that long to trim a beard. I think it's in quotation marks there because he's trimming more than his beard. And even that doesn't take three plus hours. It doesn't matter how hairy you are. It doesn't take three plus hours to trim your entire body. If you were waxing your entire body twice a week. What is he a freaking Chia pet? He just grunts. He's like, "Mm," and more hair just goes poof, pops out. That's how my beard grows. He also needs a minimum of 45 minutes in the bathroom every morning. So if we have 8 a.m. class, I expect it to be done and ready by 7.15 a.m. I am expected to be done and ready by 7.15 a.m. It sounds completely unreasonable. And I, too, could have used some extra sleep on some days since I only need about 10 minutes in the bathroom anyway. But he's but he's a really old friend of mine. So I try to adjust. Like this, he also reserves the bathroom from X time to X time because he has to get ready to go somewhere and I'm just not to use it during that interval. I'm happy to coordinate as well because I hardly need much time in the bathroom. The problem is that he also is the laziest person I know. So even though I'm not using the bathroom because of him, he also continues to lay down and not use it at all. And the bathroom just stays empty slash unused. Now, if I try to use it after that, suddenly he too has to use it. Well, not can continuously saying dude i have class too even though 90 percent of the time he ends up not going anyway if i tell him if i tell him how he doesn't use the bathroom nor does he let me he'll say things like yeah but it's my time so it doesn't matter when i go as long as you don't go 
But the bathroom isn't like a plane seat that you can reserve, right? It's a shared asset. So I've now started to wait for 10 minutes only and use the bathroom anyway while ignoring his knocking during his reserved time if I do need to go to the bathroom, which brings me here. I don't mind letting him reserve the bathroom as long as he at least uses it, but him just laying down while I just have to wait till his time is over really bothers me. Am I the ass can I? Edit. Thanks for all the replies. The reason I chose to stay with my roommate is because I have known him since school and I've had other roommates before and the male crowd... Uh, Indian college single sex hostels is absolutely terrible here and hygiene is was and hygiene was non-existent with both of my previous roommates and this guy is clean at least <laughs> I think the entire world is going to side with you and saying you are not the asshole for using the bathroom even though your roommate reserved it the fact that your roommate is willing to reserve the bathroom and then not actually use it, but only bitch about you using it if you use it during his reserved time is absolute horse shit. Horse shit. And it sounds like this might be the first time he's ever had to share anything. Ever. Like how, how did this kid get through school, like preschool, kindergarten, elementary, everything, without ever learning how to share this is not like his house. It is a shared asset. You're right. If you are paying for your dorm space here, if you're paying for this room and he is monopolizing time over a shared asset, I think he should be paying more. If he's willing to pay more for a greater use of that shared asset, sure. Let him pay for 75% of the bathroom space. You only need 25% of it or less anyway. Even then, he doesn't get to say you can only use it between X and Y time. It would just be that the time you do use it doesn't equal more than 25% of 24 hours in a day. This is the your roommate is being extremely childish and just doesn't like to share. And it's redonkulous. Kimberly, it says uh, he can reserve it, reserve it all he wants. If he isn't actually there, it's fair game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I've never heard of reserving a bathroom. Huh? We could try it. Is that what you said? I don't. That doesn't that doesn't like I, uh, that doesn't sound fun. Low bar. Low bar, controlling and power hungry, and another another iPhone kid. You're right. It's another it's another iPhone 15 Pro Max kid right here. Except the oh my gosh, <laughs> this is it. This is this is where it goes too. This, this is, that kid will end up being controlling of the bathroom. He'll end up being entitled whenever his grandchild is born. It's gonna be a freaking nightmare. Your body doesn't reserve times to use the, the bathroom, nocturnal mouth says. And I agree. There's there's a lot of things that you can reserve and schedule out. Bathroom stuff is is probably not one of those. I mean, your your normal get ready. I need to be getting ready at this time so that I can get to class or work or whatever. Sure. That's a regularly scheduled thing. Everything else is not probably going to be down to the minute, even if you are a regular person, if you know what I mean. It's a silly Silly thing to be spoiled and selfish about. Where's the RA if this is college? Good point. Um, ba, 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 ba. We've been living together for for a, a year now in college and we have one attached bathroom. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it, I don't know. They don't come out and say that it's a dorm. But if it is, yeah, having an RA come in there would be. Would be a, a, a really good idea. Laura Wester, thanks so much for the love. Greatly appreciate that. Sounds like an apartment. Could be. Yeah, not a dorm. Okay. I think we can we can say it's not a dorm there. It's an apartment. Which means that they are they are paying probably 50-50. And he if he is monopolizing a shared asset, then he probably needs to be paying more than his 50%. That still doesn't give him the right to uh to schedule schedule times for it. Does he clean it as his percent usage? That's a good question. What happens when the OP is sick? Have you ever seen bridesmaids? Got to go for the sink. 
Dr. Sweets with a whole bunch of fire there. Zoe, Miri, Lauren B, Kid Roscoe, uh, Heather, 8668, Jenny on the block, MJ Newcomb, Jamar Guy, Garth Lord Ferret subbed. Welcome to the Gosh Heckin' Fam. Glad to have you here. Uh, MJ, TLS, Zoe, Jenny Mommy, Bebop, Rebecca Barrett, Julia Cox, SOS Flint, Jenny Mommy, Skittle, TLS, uh, Ashley Marie, the Effulgent One. I know t- I know to to watch out for um for the the Dixon name today, but but I'm guessing it's changed. It's probably something different today that I'm not gonna catch. I gotta watch out for it. Yeah, yeah, just waiting to strike. Kid Roscoe, Miri, Lauren B, Donna, DJ, Lauren B, Tony Spark, Katie, uh, Lauren B. Thanks so much for the love there. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Cerulea says, reserve the kitchen. Not a bad idea right there. Reserve the kitchen. It reminds you of the uh, Big Bang Theory roommate agreement. The bathroom page. Anna Kelly, that's a darn good idea. Some kind of written agreement would make sense for this. But if they are, if they are monopolizing a shared asset, I think there's some kind of monetary backing that needs to go with it here, right? That would make sense to me. Hey, you guys unlocked Tony Spark and a reward story. Let's talk about this for a second. Sorry if it glitches up. Sweet K84 leading the board here. TLS Journey, just a Zoe M. KTTX Life, or is that Katie Texas Life? I know it's Katie. Is it Katie Texas Life? Adventures with Pam, Prep Girl, MJ Newcomb, Southern Country, Jenny Mommy, Callie Peru, Lab Bug Love, Pixie Dust, Rebecca Barrett, Skittles Mad, Tanya D, aka C. Look at them, they're all over saving me here. OMG Cookies, Lala, Joyful Stranger, Sue Ann, 257, Donna 12661, Ishtara, Dolly Santa, Dahlia Santa, Ann M. Bracker, Anna Hartman, Ashley Page, Ruby Redhead, Tony Spark, Piotr, this guy you know, Best Mommy, Amber Hickey, Kate Crush, Sweet Shelly, Jenny on the Block, Kid Roscoe, Effulgent One, Teeny Mom, Denise Burkhard, Bebop, and Jesse Romero. Thank you guys so much for helping us get there. We're going to go ahead and uh, unlock the next one here. Get the next one set up. It's the, this is the big one? <laughs> okay. This is going to be a little bit different. This is going to unlock the monstrous story. So, uh, I'm saying here, B-O-R-U story, which is the best of Redditor update story and candy feedback can be unlocked here. We're going with 3K high bears because this is the story that is how many pages long? 21? 21 pages long. It's a whopper. It's a whopper of a story. Okay, so we got that. Let's go ahead and bring Tony Spark in for a second, and then we'll get to our cake story here. Should I play your intro? Everything's been laggy when I do intros. So uh, the graphics have been... I'm, I'm not going to invite the tech gremlins to attack us right now. We're just going to clap our asses off. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Spark. Oh, my God, it's Tony Spark! Woo! Hi. Hi everybody. Going down. So uh Dusty, uh, your your um amazing, fantastic producer um didn't tell you. Um we gotta read a cake story because we were supposed to read a cake story the last time and oh, I, no. I may not have been paying attention at that exact moment, so that one's on me, chat. Sorry. But um this this goal for this next story, this or the to unlock this giant, very long story. The story's crazy. It's a roller coaster, a lot of twists and turns, a uh up like kind of a twist at the end. It's it's uh Candy was reading it and she she was like, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then she was like, I think I'm gonna cry. And then she was like, Oh, she couldn't believe it. And then I read it and it was it was wild. Um I did had the same reaction. So excited about that story. But how's everybody doing? Did we good? Ha. No, that's okay. I'll let Dusty read it. Hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. Working, hoping it's Asian food story. I don't know what that is. Not, it is not that story. Trying to file your taxes. That's the worst. That's the worst. Do what? They want. No. Read the cake story. No, that's okay. What? Why? No, because you can read it. 
Okay. Actually, I'll read the case. Hey! Too. Do you not want to read the case? We, do, we want to make sure you don't feel pressured. This is your choice. No, I don't care. Okay. Well, I don't want to read it just yet. I'm talking to chat. I know. I'm just pulling it up so you can read it when you're ready. Is it kick reward number one? Yeah. There it is. Sure. Um, the cake reward one. It's the house yeah. You guys all want me to read it, and then you'd be like, "Wow, who's this Britain?" Somebody's gonna pop in a chat, and they're gonna be like, "Who's this brozo reading this story?" And then when it gets posted, we're gonna get a DM, and they're gonna be like, "Dusty, somebody's stealing your content." And I got a really elaborate green if screen I stand in the background. Right here the whole no. time. Does They'll, that, uh... that gain all that? Just make you, just make you feel really awesome. <laughs> Standing here. <laughs> and I'll be like, no, I just have a really elaborate green screen in the background to steal all the content. <laughs> no, because you know what'll happen? I'll just see it out of the corner of my eye and I'll be like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> creepy out of focus Dustin in the background. The yeah. The dusty man again. <laughs> oh, dusty on your shoulder. Yeah. That's what he says about. That's kind of what Dusty, I think, says. Haven't you said that before about Candy and I? Like we're the ones on each shoulder, like yeah, telling you. Except most of the time we're on the same page on something, so it's like it's not really like the angel or the devil it's not thing. An angel devil. It's, it's two just devils. yeah, it's just two devils, one on each shoulder. <laughs> Dusty looks like security. Uh oh, somebody's got to calm down. Cool. Dusty can enter. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, did. We did get that yeah. one. Somebody was like, somebody did send a DM, and they were like, "Uh, somebody's stealing your video," or they commented on it, maybe or something. And they were like, "Why is this guy stealing Dusty?" We'll I'm like, when I said, I'm like, why well, stole Dusty's graphics? His background, his everything." Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. Maybe I'll get a couple followers. <laughs> <laughs> More confetti coming out of my shirt. Okay, so let's yeah, do it's this. everywhere. Let's, okay. Uh, if you don't follow me, follow me. Otherwise, I'm not going to read the story. Uh, so. What's your handle? At Tony Spark underscore. At Tony Spark underscore. Okay. Underscore underscore. Okay. Uh, I'm leaned down a little bit here because I'm crazy tall, I guess. All right. So uh, I'll do the intro here and then we'll have Tony Spark read this actual story. This is from the Dusty Thunder subreddit. This is a cake reward story and it is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Sending Away the Girl Who Came to Clean My House Because... She ate my cake. And here to do a guest reading of this story is the one and only Tony Spark, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, it's Tony Spark! Hi. All right. I, 24 female, am married to my husband, 28 male, and we have one daughter together, four female. Aaliyah? Aaliyah. We both work a lot and I also work from home often. I needed cleaning, so last week I called an agency and they sent a girl over to clean the house and we agreed on $40 an hour. Let's call her Eva. So Eva, who is around 19 to 20 years old, arrives in my house with her little, little sister, eight female. I asked her why her little sister was with her and she said she had no one else to leave her with. I wasn't very pleased, but I assumed she didn't have a choice and I didn't say anything. I showed Eva the playroom and... I showed Eva the playroom and said it needed to be cleaned as well, and her sister started staring around the room, touching all the toys. I again didn't say anything. Eva started working, and I went to my room to get ready to pick up a cake for Alea and to pick up Alea from school. I heard a noise in Alea's playroom, so I rushed over and saw Eva's sister playing in the room. Playing in the room. She broke a glass bowl that I had custom made for Alea, Alea when she was born. I'm probably going to get this name. Like, right and wrong, like, four different times. So, anyway. At this point, I was annoyed again, but I held back and told Eva to clean it up and keep an eye on her sister. I went out and picked up Alea's favorite cake. It was a cake that had strawberries only on one side, on the top, and there were more decorations, etc. I put it in the fridge and left again to pick up Alea. When, I, when we walked in the kitchen, I saw Eva's sister eating a big piece of the cake, specifically the part with the strawberries and decorations. Oh, no. That's not good. That's not good. That's not your cake. I've never had an issue like this before. In fact, the cleaning ladies have never opened my fridge because they have no business there. I asked Eva what she thought she was doing, and she told me, my sister was sad and really wanted cake, so I figured she could have a piece. 
that's that doesn't that doesn't <laughs> seem seem like the right thing to do. Alea started crying because she'd been looking forward to her cake with strawberries, and now the pieces with strawberries were gone. I told Eva that it was not her place to figure out whether her sister could eat something from my fridge without asking me. She could have waited for me to get back because I told her I would be back. I told her that even if she did do this, she shouldn't have taken the whole decorated piece because she should have figured out that this cake was meant for my daughter. Eva said, you're getting mad for no reason. Just take the money for my pay. Okay, well, we'll think it works that way. Like... I told her she could pack up her stuff and leave with her sister, and she didn't have to finish the house cleaning. She had been at the house for only two hours, but I paid her $120 and told her to get out. I told a friend, and she told me that I overreacted a piece of, over a piece of cake, and I should have been more understanding toward the little girl. I again said that it is not just cake, but it is rude to open my fridge and take out, take out a cake that is not unboxed yet and eat it. I am now wondering, am I the Askinot? Edit, Eva was supposed to be there for three hours, and I sent her away after two hours and yelling at her, but paid her for three hours. So she came in and she stole your cake. Like, she, her sister ate a piece of the cake, and then you still paid her for more time than she was there? That's really nice. But anyway, what are your thoughts, Dusty Thunder? My face is just stuck like this now. Like, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think my biggest thing here is is that, like he said, it's not just about the cake. The fact that it's cake makes it worse, makes it so much worse. And she broke the bowl. Somebody, over. somebody said she broke the bowl too. That's <sighs> don't forget about that. Uh, Neen makes a good point here, and yeah, this is this is about boundaries. This is about uh, permission was not not asked. It was not requested first. It was not there. No kind of path here was was a path of respect there could be a cultural boundary there could be there could be a, a several things that caused this to get muddy however i think if you are doing work for someone you are in someone else's space it is common universal knowledge that you don't just start rifling through their cabinets and taking things right this was this was this was someone who was comfortable enough to just take something um the bigger issue for me is that when op got upset about it she says, you're getting mad over nothing. Just take it from my pay. And that that is an act to minimize OP's feelings. It was essentially like someone telling you your feelings don't matter um, and or your feelings aren't aren't relevant. They aren't real. They aren't justified. Um, and, and you can't just just snap your fingers and replace it or hit the microphone. You can't just snap your fingers and replace that. You know, it was it was event specific. It was time specific. It was needed at a specific time. So this is this is a larger inconvenience than she has made it out to be. The fact that she just minimized everything about it being a problem is what really pisses me off here. I think OP did the right thing. I think OP's path here is completely justified to get upset about it, to dismiss her, to still pay her for for the full time that she should have been there. Like there should be no way in hell that she can come back and be like you wronged me after this, right? Yeah. There should be no way in hell. I think OP removed the threat without without opening the door for for any blowback at all, and uh, and that's it. I, I think it's a you can't trust this person though moving forward. That's that's the hard part. And I think um, it's a bad Yelp review coming. It is a bad in Yelp review. One. And if you find particularly service people who are individual service people like this, like if you have a, a service that does anything for you, freaking. Freaking barbers are the same. It's the same kind of thing, right? Like if you find somebody good, like you, you want that relationship to stay healthy and positive because you don't want to have to find another person. Finding another solid, dependable, good service person is is hell. Uh, so to have to go through the pain of now finding another person to to fill that slot is an additional pain for OP that they're going to have to go through here, and that sucks. But you can't trust this person anymore. Well, and it's just like, it wasn't just one thing. It wasn't like, oh, she broke a bowl. Oh, she was playing with toys that she didn't even ask to play with. Right. And then she also ate cake that was not hers. It's not like it was a piece of leftover cake wrapped in some saran wrap in the fridge. Like, ah, oh, it's been there a couple of days. It was a brand new, unboxed, untouched cake, clearly for somebody's birthday. And you just go in there and be like, oh, yeah, well, I thought she wanted a piece, so it's fine. What? No, that's not. And you broke a bowl. And the fact that she still paid her was... 
paid her the full amount of, I would have only paid her for the time that she was there. I mean like, well, okay, the rest of that is coming out to get a new cake or to yeah. fix a bowl that can't be replaced because it was made specifically for that person. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, and I think you have the right to do all of those things. I think by, by choosing the, the high road or being the bigger person or whatever you want to call it, they were just hedging against potential blowback, which you would think would be the case. Um, but, but yeah, somebody had commented in here, like, you, you need water? Sure. It, Cammy, yeah, need water? Sure. Take it. Needing a cake? What was the rest of that? Oh, damn. I'm on the wrong pot now. Needing cake? Ask or stay silent in others' homes. Yeah, I, I think it's the gall to to go into somebody else's home and crack open that brand new cake and be like, yeah, yeah. I have I have the right to do this. It's it's not okay. And some people are, I see where they're like, kids shouldn't have been there, and that's probably true, too. If there's really no other situation, mm. like... Give the kid an iPad or an iPhone and set them and say, hey, you sit here and play. You know what I mean? Or bring something for yeah. them to play with. Bring them bring them a toy. Bring them a game. Hand them your iPhone 15 Pro Max. Exactly. Don't give them anything less because you would ruin <laughs> that kid's life. But like, give them something and say, hey, I'm working. You need to sit here and be good. If you yes. want something, you need to come ask me for it. Not just, I'm going to go play with these toys. I'm going to break this. I'm hungry. I want a piece of cake. I'm sad. Like, I... No, like if you want something, ask for it. If not, like just sit here, be quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Also, this kid sounds uh sounds a little hellish. Seriously. It's like they're not happy unless they're breaking. It's shit like been there, been there in two hours. You <laughs> broke a bowl, you played with toys that you weren't supposed to, and you ate a cake. <laughs> what? Like, Who is this kid? It's just on the loose. The what? kid's just running amok. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's a. it's like Stitch from Lilo and Stitch, right? <laughs> like that's not a kid. That's wild. Well, OP, you're not you're not the asshole. So. What's the experiment number for Stitch from Lilo and Stitch? You remember? Uh, oh, I haven't seen it. Dang it. Ever. I have a feeling that beer today is going to going to come in clutch here. And uh, and no, <laughs> the theme of this live is iPhone 15. Alf, from Alf. Alf. Six, Somebody, two, six. There you go, Savannah. Look at, look at that. that. Everybody's six, six. all about it. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Somebody says seven, two, seven. So that, that's an airplane. Uh, oh. No. Yeah, there, there probably is a seven, two, seven. That's that was probably the 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 new one that they made to come catch 626. That's, yeah. that's a lot of 626s. Yeah, there's a lot of 626s. Uh, yeah. All right, that's an interesting one. Tony Spark with the, the story, story right there. We're at, we're at 2010 of 3000 for one of the craziest stories we've ever read. It is a long one, so when we hit the goal, you'll have to like get your popcorn, get ready to go, because it's going to be a long one, but yeah. So now, because I, I mess up the order, so now you got to read the, the, the second cake story. No, the spicy one. We did that was the cake one. Then this because mine was supposed to be oh, spicy. Okay. Really okay, right? okay, okay, okay. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. The spicy one's not the long one though, right? The spicy one is not the long one. That's, I don't know why it's not on there. I'm gonna have to look into okay. that for a second. But, All right, I will yeah. read the spicy reward story. Yeah, we're going from cake reward story to spicy we're reward story. Twenty one hundo out of three three K high bears to unlock that. Heck yeah. Leroy was six to seven. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. So a spicy reward story now. This one is titled, Am I the Askinaut for Calling the Cops on My Mother? Oh. Before we get into that, Justina, Candy Thunder, Julia, Lena, Canadian Girl, TLS, Kimberly P. Fane, Joyful Stranger, Shadowcat Mini, Lil Red, Debra, uh, Shadowcat Mini again there, Denise, Alana, Rebecca, TLS, Lauren B., Carrie Lee, uh, Katie, Just Mags, Amberella Hickey, Elizabeth Schultz, Zoe, Shaz, Mary, uh, Overkill Mill, Heidi J., Amber Ale Hickey again there. Lena, thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love. Jilly5, Alejandra Skittle. Um, bu- 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 I see you there. A flower ranked. Ranked. Dobby Potter. Thanks for the love there, too. Stacey Ann, what did you say? 67. 67. We're climbing the ranks here, folks. Uh, Skittle, Grace for life. Alejandra, Jilly5, Zoe, thank you guys for the love. Greatly appreciate it. Carissa Freeman, see you there, too. Amy Indy, Miss Sass, likes to dance. Stacy Ann. Carissa Freeman again, Grace for Life. Thanks so much. Greatly appreciate the love. Let's go. Spicy reward story. We're uh, we're a little over 500 to go on the on the high buyers goal there as well for the, the 20 pager. Am I the Askinoff for calling the cops on my mother? So I, 22 female recently. Sorry, I screwed up a lot of words. That's what I did. So I, 22 female, received a visit from my mom for New Year's. She came with one of my cousins and we hung out for a couple of days and it was great. The only time things were bad was when she asked if I could loan her about $500 and she promised to cash at me the money back when she got paid next time. I told her no. She tried to argue with me, but I shut her down and she let it go. 
I logged onto my credit card account online to pay my balance since my check came through that morning, and I saw that my balance was much higher than I had expected. There were three charges I expected, my electric bill, my phone bill, and some gas, and then several charges I knew weren't for me. They were for fast food, they were for fast food, clothing places, etc. Thought it might be a glitch, so I called my credit card company and checked my wallet for my card. I realized that it was missing, and a nice customer service rep helped me with the whole process. But then I started walking through everyone who my wallet had been around and every place it had been left since my last physical use of it. I ended up texting my mom because it was stressing me out and I felt like I needed to talk to one of my parents. But dad and I aren't on great terms. When I told my mom what happened, she told me not to worry and that it wasn't stolen. She had just borrowed it. If you borrow something without telling someone, that's stealing it, right? I just, I just I just borrowed it without letting you know. I was keeping it safe from you. Red flag for that. To be honest, I did lose my cool once I realized she wasn't joking. She insisted she'd cash at me the money when she gets paid the next day and that she thought she'd be able to handle it before I even noticed. I told her that's not acceptable and to cut up my card. I deactivated it anyway. She got upset and told me to stop throwing a fit and that she couldn't believe I was being such a brat about helping her things escalated from there and i did call her some names before telling her not to contact or come around me and hung up after that i called the police both in my area and in hers to see which precinct i needed to file charges with my mom has blown up my phone so much so much since this that i had to block her on that i had to block her and she is posting all over facebook about how i'm getting her thrown back in jail just for borrowing some money and how she can't understand how she raised such a stingy child am i the astronaut or losing my mind i don't think i did anything wrong here you didn't you didn't do anything wrong the this is uh (laughs) the fact that your mom hold on Hold on, hold on. The fact that the narrative that your mom is posting on Facebook is, I can't believe my stingy little shit of a child is getting me thrown back in the slammer. Back in the slammer. All I did was borrow some money without telling, without saying anything. Didn't realize it would be such a big deal. What? Okay, so everybody who's connected with her and is seeing this narrative is like, yep, seems about right. No one, no one in the world thinks that you've done anything wrong here. Know that right now. Your mom doesn't even think you've done anything wrong here. She's just surprised that you, her own flesh and blood, turned her in. That's it. She's just surprised that uh, that she can't even screw over her own family without them speaking up. My goodness. No, you did the right thing here. Um, and now you know. Now you know that you you can't even trust her. You can't even trust your own mom, which sucks. But at least you know now. The question here was, am I am I the asking for calling the cops on my mother? Hell no. No, no, no. And your mom. Your mom. We're taking her all the way up to ask on one because this was a terribly a terribly. It's where I'm at, folks. Brain is like scrambled eggs right now. Mom is a terrible person. She knows she's a terrible person and she's accepted this. Like it's just her lot in life to be a terrible person and to do terrible things. And that sucks to be to be connected to someone in your immediate family who has just accepted that their lot in life is to uh, is to screw over everyone that they've ever known and continue doing so and have no inclination of breaking that cycle at all and to be a victim of life. Right. That's the part of this that pisses me off. The worst is Your mom, at least outwardly, blames you for getting thrown back in jail. Like it wasn't her choices that did this. It was you that did this. Just just, you're going to have to build up a wall and you probably have. You built up a wall already to make sure that that none of the none of her bullshit can actually get through and affect you, which bravo, because you seem you seem fairly well adjusted given the circumstances here but yes the 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 brass tacks of it are that you can't trust your own mother she's going to deal with you so you have to keep her at arm's length (sighs) shell can't wait to see what words that come up with on the 24 hour live oh it's gonna be rough (laughs) what what do you mean by fold just fold it in quit saying fold it 
just fold in the cheese. It says you just fold the cheese in. That will be fun. That's a biological mom, not a true mom, for sure. Agreed. <sighs> Does your mom clean houses over kill mill? <laughs> Has she brought home any random boxes of cake? Anything like that? Unscramble your brain, 21 pages. Oh, yeah, this is going to go well. High bear goal has been achieved. We are going to be diving into the monstrous story now. Uh, yeah, let's do it. They unlocked it. They done did it. Dr. Sweet, Sweet K84 leading the board there. At least Newman in the number two slot. Just Zoe coming in number three. TLS Journey, Southern Country. Katie, Texas Life. I'm saying Texas Life. Katie, TX Life. Michelle, Heather, Kimberly P, Callie, Peru, Dolby, Palta, Diesel Girl, Prep Girl, LMD10, Candy Thunder, Pixie Dust. Miles has the clutch here. Adventures with Pam, El Marine, La La, Tanya D, aka T. Sue Ann, 257. Um, Kaylee and Zara Lawson. OMG Cookies, Skittle Mad, Flower Girl, Jelly 55, Justina, Ruby Redhead, Fane, Amber L. Hickey, Heidi J, Jenny Thompson, Joyful Stranger, Poor Gwitch, Anna Hartsman, Berlioz, Ishtara, Rebecca Barrett, Piotr, Cranky Grandma, Don Banks, Overkill Mill, Tony Spark, Carissa Freeman, Maria. Uh, Mags Amazing, Denise Burkhardt, and Queenie. Thank you guys so much for helping unlock that. Greatly appreciate it. <laughs> whose apple is that? That That's Miles. That's my Sony said, whose apple is that? Uh, yeah, I know. It burned a little bit. Yeah, it's like stings. It's my iPhone 13. <laughs> he said, it's my iPhone 13. Thank you. Oh, uh, man. Opal says, hi, Dusty. You kept any company during the move in the ER today. Well, you got a move and an ER visit today, Opal? That doesn't sound fun. No, Angel. Well, we'll have we'll have the recording of it for you. So, um, so no, we're, we're about to head into a crazy, crazy long story. Let me get the next goal set up. But this is a twenty pager, so it's going to be a long, long, long one. Uh, just get your popcorn ready. You can get your, get your popcorn ready while I'm getting this next goal set up. Um, probably. Need to make sure I'm watered up here real good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, Yeah, let me get the next one set up. I'm already freaking out. I'm like, oh, oh my God. It's a long story. Okay, this next one is actually going to gonna unlock Caden Thunder and a cake story. And we are doing what? Wait a second. You've got two different goals listed on here. Tony wow. Spock. It says uh, on the. <laughs> I'm like, that's not a thing. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> I'm like, what's a confetti high bear? What is oh, that? Not too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and cake story. Okay, we have a hundred confettis. To get Caden Thunder and a cake story unlocked, it's probably going to get unlocked during the reading of this twenty pager, and then we'll uh, we'll see what happens here. Macy, thank you. Oh boy. Uh, okay. Uh, where is this one linked at? What number is this? What should it be titled? What What is it on the outline? Uh, yeah, not on my document, man. Is your document the live 0124424? Hey, just tell me what stories it's between so I can go find it. Okay. Nope, it's not. Hey, we got some stuff trying to figure out uh, here. We're trying to get the, the the story to actually show up on the document that I'm reading from. So, uh, will the 24 hours one be uploaded later? Uh, we're actually going to take that 24 hour one and we'll bust it up into all the individual story edits, which will take weeks to get through because it's we're approximating around 100 stories right now. In the meantime, we've already hit that goal with the uh, with the confetti here. Hey, it's weird for tech gremlins to be attacking someone other than me. 
Hey! Dr. Sweet's leading the board here with that one. TLS Journey, Ruby Redhead, Southern Country, Just Zoe, Prep Girl, Adventures with Pam, Black Wolf 542, Kimberly P, Elise Newman, OMG Cookies, Ms. Pamela L, Aurora, Dawn Banks, Amber L. Hickey. Miles, do you mind saving me again after number 15? And Caden Thutter, we'll go ahead and bring you up while we're trying to untangle the, the document mess there. All right, Flower Girl 77, Jelly 55, and El Marine. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love there. I'm going to get the next one set up real quick. We'll bring Caden up here, and then I think we're getting the, the story added to the dock here. Oh, this will be confetti and helmet. Oh, my. It's like the Hades helm for all of you Percy Jackson fans out there. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Have you been watching? You've been watching? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We'll just dance it out while we're waiting. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get Caden Thunder up here, and then we should be ready to dive into our story here. The one, the only, Caden Thunder. It's me. Kaden, hi. Is the problem with you? I'm not the problem. I'm the solution. Hang on. That was my song for today. Yeah. You're welcome, everybody. How's it going? How's it going? Who is this guy? Let me tell you who this guy is. I'm Kaden Thunder. I'm I'm Dusty Thunder's oldest child. That's who I am. How are you? How are you today? Sometimes they bring me in to talk on camera because some people like me. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. Chat tells you. They'll tell you who I am. They'll, they'll talk about me. Let's, uh... <laughs> Heir to the Thunder Eric Throne. Eric says you don't look anything like him at all. We don't look alike? <laughs> no. Uh, let, let's talk about Percy Jackson for a second. Okay. We can Do, talk about Percy Jackson. How many people in chat have been have been watching the new Percy Jackson series? Yeah, I want to hear about that. Ravens? Hell yeah. I hope. I mean, they're both really good teams. We're going to see what happens. Go Chiefs. You know who we're rooting for the whole way. Uh, yeah. Okay. So a lot of people have been watching Percy Jackson. Let's dive in there for a second. What are your okay. thoughts on it so far? I, I, I really enjoy it. I'm really enjoying it so far. I watched last night's episode as soon as it came out. I've been watching every episode as soon as it comes out. I read the books when I was a kid. That was like my book series. So yep. I, I enjoyed a lot. I think it's, I think it's going great so far. I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, Ava Thunder was talking about Persebeth. Persebeth, yeah. Persebeth, yeah, and uh, yeah, and I don't see it. I mean, I, I know well, it's got to go. To, it's got to go there eventually. Think but. about Ron and Hermione in the first Harry Potter movie. You can't really see it, right? But eventually, it'll get there. It, it, they, they'll grow. Their chemistry will grow, and and the kids who are playing the characters will grow and get older, and you know, they'll the chemistry will grow as well. I sure. think I think it'll be great. I'm I'm just excited. I'm excited for. The next episode, I'm excited for the next season. I won't spoil anything. Don't worry. I'm just saying, I love the show. It's great. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Another show that I'm currently watching right now is The Ted Show. Good golly. That is, that is a funny show. It is it is fantastic. Um, Ironically, Tony hasn't watched it yet, but he should. He lives it. I like... So far, do I like the book or the series better? I like the book better, of course, because that's the first... Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the book's always going to be better. Um, I think the show's doing a really, really good job of interpreting the book, though. I really liked the first movie that they put out, like, way back when, too, even though it wasn't really accurate. I was younger, and I watched it, and I was like, oh, whoa, that's so cool. Yeah, you know? So, I really... I really... I really thought that was that was good too, but I think that the show is doing a better job of accurately representing how the book felt. So I think it's pretty cool. Uh, Queen Chewy, I saw your first comment that said I've been on a hello lately, and I was like, "What? Hello?" Uh, but yeah, then I saw the autocorrect 
autocorrect it attacked you. Attacked it. That's where I'm at. My autocorrect is inside my mouth, and it is acting up too. Should spit it uh, out. But it was Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, I saw Hell's your Kitchen. Where you talked about Hell's, Hell's Kitchen. Somebody else was asking where these shows are all hosted. So uh, uh, Ted, yeah. Peacock. Ted shows on Peacock. You should give that a watch. Absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah, I laughed out loud like multiple times. I'm not done with it, but okay. Uh, producers are telling me to wrap up. I'm I'm being pulled off. I know you all. I know you all love me a lot, but I've got to go now. Um, I just wanna I wanna thank my dad and I wanna. Okay, bye everybody. <laughs> the version of playing you off is raising the desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is too good. Uh, yeah, it's too good. K- Kate and Thunder is such a good sport about everything oh, yeah. and legit just freaking hilarious. So we do we do have the story on the dock now so we can dive into it. In the meantime, though, we've we've achieved the donuts goal. So we're going to talk about that for a second and then we'll dive into it. Oh, my. Dr. Sweets, just Zoe, A.K. Marie. TLS Journey, Michelle Heather, Adventures with Pam, Kimberly P, Southern Country, Ruby Redhead, Jenny, Jenny the Block, Prep Girl, OMG Cookies, and Nadja. I'm going to get this. Nadja Miglin. I'm, I'm sure I screwed that up, but bless it. Thank you, guys. There it was. Did you hear Candy Thunder squeal that time? Was that a real squeal? That was a, there was a lot of confetti in there. That was a lot of confetti. Oh my. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Okay. Uh, so that was for confetti and helmet. Oh, I should have put the, uh, yeah, I'll do it at the end. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. The next one that we're setting up is a just because, because we've unlocked everything. You guys have unlocked everything there is to unlock for today because you're amazed balls. So. This is a just because. Here we go. Break it. We're also ranked number 34. So we're ranked. Cool. We're still climbing. Heck yeah. Nice. What a perfect time for a bunch of uh, a bunch of first time stream visitors to pop in in the middle of a 20 page long story and just be completely lost. This is going to be great. OK, here we go. Uh, Michelle Heather, thanks for the here we go. Speaking of, yeah, just, just it was serendipitous right there. All right, let's do it. <clears throat> okay, here we go. <sighs> this is the Whopper. Get your popcorn ready. Buckle in. Okay, this is a best of Reddit or update story that is titled, Am I the astronaut for wearing a white dress to a wedding after being specifically requested to by the bride? Okay bride requested that op wear a white dress to a wedding got it omg my head is such a jumble right now let me try to make sense of all this when i 26 female was five we moved and our next door neighbors had a girl my age named bella 27 female we immediately connected and grew up thick as thieves our families were also close i moved a couple of hours away for college while bella stayed home she would come visit me frequently stay with me and we had great times i met barrett 26 male now in an econ class sophomore year and realized we had a lot of friends in common he was a smart attractive guy so we ended up hooking up a few times after study sessions it was fun but there wasn't really long-term chemistry so we remained friends we never even talked about dating we weren't close after that but we were on a group but we were on group text threads together and saw each other frequently at parties i introduced bella to barrett at a senior at a party senior year and it was love at first sight for her she interrogated me about him and i informed her of our history she seemed pretty upset about the fact that we had hooked up but i assured her that there was absolutely nothing romantic there and that she had my blessing to pursue him she did and after a few months they started officially dating she was over the moon i was happy that she was happy I graduated and accepted a job six hours away from home. Shortly afterwards, Bella and Barrett ended up moving in together in my hometown. I visited them frequently at first, but life got busy, so we ended up seeing each other annually at holidays. Last Christmas, my family hosted a Christmas Eve party with our two families at which Barrett proposed to Bella. It was a heartfelt proposal, and everybody was thrilled for them. Bella wanted to talk about nothing but wedding planning that holiday, and we had tons of fun brainstorming ideas together. There were no signs of what was to come. 
What good foreshadowing. They set the scene. Over the next few months, I expected to be formally asked to be Bella's maid of honor. She had mentioned this over the holidays, but the ask never came. She started screening my calls. Finally, I received a save the date in the mail and still hadn't heard from her about whether I was in the wedding, so I got her on the phone and asked her. She told me that she had thought it through and didn't think that I should be in the wedding at all because I lived so far away. She thought it would make coordinating bridal events too difficult. She was making her cousin, who she doesn't even like, her maid of honor. I was pretty hurt by this. I was her closest and oldest friend. I introduced her to her fiancé and was friends with him, too. I told her that I could get the time off work, would buy plane tickets, whatever was required of me to participate, that I didn't think I was going to be that I didn't think it was going to be as challenging as she thought. She shrugged this off. Instead, she directed the conversation to whether I was going to be bring, bringing someone to the wedding. I was a little confused by this question because I had just had a bad breakup and she knew all about that and what had went down. I told her that since I wasn't seeing anybody currently, I'd probably be attending solo. She told me that she would keep my plus one open until the last possible minute and encouraged me to try to find a date so I wouldn't be lonely. I thought this was a nice gesture, but it reassured her that with my family present and tons of mutual friends from our college and hometown that I would be fine. The next few months passed without much incident. I didn't hear a ton from Bella. I probably could have reached out more, but I was still stinging a bit from not being asked to be in her wedding. I also saw on social media that she had an engagement party that she had not told me about, that she had not told me about or invited me to. That also hurt, but I didn't say anything. I figured we were just growing apart. It happens. Then six weeks prior to the wedding. Sorry, words are hard. Six weeks prior to the wedding. <laughs> Just naturally becoming characters here, folks. Steampy, you idiot. Then six weeks prior to the wedding, I got a call from Bella. She told me that one of her bridesmaids had dropped out and that she was hoping I could fill in. I wouldn't be going to any of the events as those were already booked, but I would be in the wedding party. I was thrilled and relieved and accepted immediately. She told me that she was doing a reverse color palette for the bridal party where all of the bridesmaids and groomsmen were wearing white and that she and the groom were wearing black. That didn't seem strange. Bella has always liked to stand out and, and has unconventional taste. She apologized for the late notice and asked if I could find a white dress in time. I had a white slip dress already that would work and sent her a picture of it on the call to see if it would work. She verbally approved it and tagged it with a thumbs up on the text change. On the text chain. This will be important later. The wedding was at noon, so we were supposed to meet to do hair and makeup at the venue at 8 a.m. I left my parents home early and arrived in sweats with my dress in a bag and greeted Bella and the other girls. We had fun drinking champagne and getting ready. About two hours prior to the ceremony, Bella told everybody to get our dresses on so we could do some pictures. I grabbed my bag and went to the bathroom to change and tweak my makeup. When I re-entered the room, every last bridesmaid was in a blue dress. I was the only one in white. My stomach dropped. Oh, no. Did this girl really do this to this girl? My mind raced back to the conversation I had with Bella. She had said white, right? I hadn't misheard. No, I was certain. She had called out the reverse color scheme. I had Googled it. No, this was a setup. Bella was in the middle of the room in a bathrobe with a resigned look on her face. She said to her cousin, I told you she was going to do something like this. Her cousin approached me and asked what I was wearing. I mumbled that Bella had told me to wear white. Bella didn't even blink. She stared back and huffed out a laugh and said something about how of course I would have to make today all about me. The cousin started screaming at me, going off on me about how I was jealous, in love with Barrett, and how completely unhinged I was. Honestly, I froze in that moment. I was so spun around by how fast everything went from great to shit, I couldn't even find the words to defend myself. Eventually, I stammered out that I had another dress at my parents' house and could go home and change. Bella said something like, I think we both know that this is the end of our friendship. I've given you too many chances. It's time for you to go. I started to cry. I didn't really know what was happening or what she was talking about, but I knew that whatever was going down was really bad. Finally, my legs started to work again and I fled. I left all of my things at the venue and just ran to my car and went home, sobbing in the white dress. About half an hour later, my phone blew up. Text from nearly everyone in my life telling me that I was bitter, that I was a whore, that I needed to grow up and get over my jealousy, asking how I could do that to Bella. Even my mother sent me a text telling me how disappointed she was in me and that we'd talk when they got home. I did what any rational person would do in that situation. I broke into my parents' liquor cabinet and got drunk. 
As a result, the conversation with my parents finally the conversation when my parents finally arrived home was somewhat confused. My dad wouldn't even look at me, and my mom and I kept talking past each other. She outright didn't believe that I had been told to wear white, and I didn't understand why. Then finally she said something like, because of everything else that happened. And I was like, what are you talking about? What does that mean? And she said, you know, your ultimatums to Bella. The next few hours revealed the truth. Over the last several months, Bella has been building a fiction with nearly everyone in my life that I am mentally unstable and madly in love with Barrett. She has concocted a web of outlandish tales and systematically poisoned my family and friends against me. My boyfriend apparently dumped me because my feelings for Barrett lie. He cheated and I dumped him. I told Bella that she needs to choose between me and Barrett. Never happened. I told Bella that I couldn't be in the wedding party because I couldn't support her marriage given that Barrett was meant for me. Lie. I had a major meltdown before the engagement party and that's why I wasn't there. On and on. Lies on top of lies. In all of these stories, Bella has painted herself as the patient, long-suffering friend trying to deal with a friend clearly going through a tough time. She expressed understanding for my unrequited love for Barrett and empathized with how hard it must be for me to see her marry the love of my life. And that has made and has made great efforts to try to sustain our friendship despite how complicated the situation is. The lie has been going on so long, my mom literally did not believe me. Finally, I grabbed my phone and handed it to her and told her to go through my text messages with Bella, asked her to show me any evidence of any of that happening. It was when she was scrolling through reading our messages that she saw the picture of the white dress I had sent Bella with her thumbs up on it. I had completely forgotten about it. The absence of any ultimatums or Barrett drama in our text and the picture of the approved dress flipped my mom. She finally believed me. She was horrified that she had bought into a false narrative. She called my dad into the room and explained what was what. My dad isn't the type of person you want to piss off. We had to spend significant energy trying to calm him down so he didn't walk next door and rip the house out from the front. from the foundation. My mom still says that I'm a bit of an asshole because I should never have assumed that I could wear white to someone else's wedding. I should have confirmed with the other bridesmaids about what they were wearing, and that was part of my job as a member of the bridal party. Fine, I own that, but it doesn't change the fact that I never meant to hurt Bella, and she's been setting me up for this epic fall for months. The next day, hung over on multiple levels, I sent screenshots of my call history with Bella and the other photo that and the photo of the approved dress words are hard. The next day, hung over on multiple levels, I sent screenshots of my call history with Bella and the photo of the approved dress text with to multiple people. Unfortunately, this is where my occupation works against me. I am a graphic designer and people believe that I photoshopped the image. Trust me, if I was going to photoshop some proof, it would have been a hell of a lot more compelling than somebody liking an image. So pretty much nobody believes me except my mom, dad, and one of the other bridesmaids, one of Bella's friends from college I don't know well. She was there during the dress incident, and she found me on social media and DM'd me that she could tell from the stunned look on my face that I was telling the truth. She said that Bella had a pretty bad case of COVID at the beginning of the year, and ever since then had changed as a person, becoming cruel and self-absorbed. She said the wedding events had been horrific and Bella was a monster and she was planning on going no contact now that it was done. So that's three people out of hundreds that don't think I'm an asshole. Everybody else does. My reputation destroyed. My life in tatters. I don't think I'm the asshole, but I submit myself to Reddit's judgment. We've got some some uh, relevant comments and Opie's answers and updates and stuff to go through, but I got I got to take a drink of water. <laughs> This is maniacal. This is uh, like I don't understand the motive. I don't understand the need to to create this this massive collapse unless like Barrett speaks so highly of her that she perceives her as a threat and has to take her out. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. Would you tell that? <laughs> <laughs> It gives you a chance to what? Uh, oh, Candy Thunder has something she'd like to say it's, here, too. This is uh, not about the story, but he always says words are hard, but he sat there and read what well, was probably like, was probably like, that was probably like 16 pages, and he messed up twice. And he tells these stories with like such vigor and emotion and like has you at, on the edge of your seat the whole time. Like, I've read this story, we've all read it, but like the way that you tell it is just so like, it's magical. 
And I'm just not saying that just because he's my husband. Like, I truly believe it. So, yay, Dustin. Thank you, Tater. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you, Tater. <laughs> uh, she's so good to me. And, and she's even over there filling up my water so I can continue reading. Thank you, love. Uh, okay, so. Well, yeah, words are for real hard, though. So relevant comments and original OP's answers to some questions. Did Barrett maybe say something about him having feelings for you that you did not reciprocate? This is possible, I guess, but I'm not aware of any incidents. I think perhaps this has more to do with Bella's cousin putting poison in her ear about me than Barrett actually having feelings for me. But that's just a gut instinct. I don't actually know. Barrett's cousin. Wait. Bella's cousin. What's Bella's cousin's problem? Oh, yeah. Okay. So they've got, yeah, they've got some kind of, some kind of thing going on there. And where was Barrett in all of this? You said he was your friend. So it seems odd that he would watch his bride attempt to ruin your life for the fun of it. The first time I saw him after last Christmas was at the rehearsal the night before the wedding. I gave him a hug and congratulated him and expressed how excited he must be. And we talked about my drive up and how some of our mutual friends flights had been canceled. It was entirely benign. Bella was talking to somebody else and I greeted her a bit later. I never saw him the day of the wedding because it, I didn't make it that far. I have no idea what he makes of all this, but I do have to imagine that he's been poisoned to believe I'm some deranged stalker as well. I haven't reached out to him because I'm worried doing so would add fuel to Bella's narrative. If your parents were at the engagement party, why didn't you tell them you weren't invited? My parents were not at the engagement party. My understanding was that it was more of a friend's engagement party than a familial one, but they did know that it happened, and I do think they expected me to come home for it. There was a lot of miscommunication between my mom and I. My parents are pretty low EQ and uncomfortable with emotions and drama, so they didn't pry too deeply. My mom would ask me questions like, so Bella told me a little bit about what's going on. Are you okay? And I would assume that she was talking about my cheating ex, where my mom was actually talking about my unrequited love for Barrett. And I would respond with something like, I'm, strugg I'm struggling a little, but I'm getting through it. I'll be okay. Thanks, mom. And, and like that, we kept talking past each other. Looking back, there were a few things my mom said that confused me, but I didn't seek clarity at the time. In response to some more questions on that thread... So if they expected you to come home for it, why did they never ask you about your plans to attend and when you would be home? I wish I could answer your question, but I genuinely do not know the timelines from my end. I don't know what my parents knew when, when the party invites went out, when my parents were told that Bella told by Bella that I couldn't handle going. All of this happened without me knowing it. So I just don't know. Trust me, the fact that my parents thought all of this stuff was going on with me and didn't properly talk to me about it has been difficult to swallow. Okay, time for the update. You ready? Yeah. Update time. Let's do it. Like intermission at a, at a Broadway show. And this is this is giving this is this is giving like a like Ursula vibes, right? I mean it's like she this friend didn't used to be like this. She just got embodied by some by by some villain, and then now is just tanking lives around her. She's very Ursula. Well, you're just a sour patch kid today, aren't you? You were super sweet, and you got to balance it out with, with some sassy sour there. That's that's where it all that's where where it all balances out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the update. January 16th, 2024, almost two months later. I've gone back and forth about updating my post. If you read my update, hopefully you'll understand why. For safety reasons, this will likely be my one and only update. Before I get started, I want to address a question a lot of commenters had about my parents. A lot of people were questioning why my mom would hear all of that stuff about me and not check in on me or comfort me. It's because I am an apostate. Is that how you pronounce it? An ap apostate, apostate, renounced my family's religion. Is it apostate or apostate? Apostate. apostate. It's because I'm an apostate, renounced my family's religion. Last year, I left the religion my parents raised me in, which Bella is still involved in, so she has superior credibility. My politics differ also. From where mom and dad sat, I was a sinner capable of any act of evil because I turned my back on biblical principles. Assume that the broader religious community in this town believes the same of me. Despite this, I tried to have a relationship with my parents. I am an only child. 
They are my only family, but there was strain and distance there. For example, I did not tell my parents a lot about my breakup because the circumstances of that would reinforce some of my parents' worst beliefs about me. It's also the reason I haven't been home in the last year. It's also one of the reasons I assumed things were strained between Bella and I in the last year. I didn't bring it up because everybody wanted to point out my post was already too damn long. And this one will be too. Sorry. I would have guessed that the events of the wedding would strain my relationship with my parents further, but unexpectedly it had brought us closer. I think many of my parents' strong opinions of me were more about how they felt my leaving the church would ultimately reflect on them and the community. But now that the community has rallied against me and the worst has happened, they've circled the herd. They've waged holy war in their church on my behalf in the last couple of months. It's weirdly cemented that my parents actually do care about me, despite our differences as people. So in that regard, this awful event has been a blessing. A lot of the awkwardness between us from the last year has faded, and it really feels like they've chosen a side, and that side is mine. We had a great holiday together. So in that way, I'm glad this happened. On to the update. In the immediate aftermath of the wedding and post, I did as people suggested and sent out a screen recording of my text messages with Bella, all of them going back months to encounter to counter her narrative that I was unstable and explaining my side of the story. There were three camps that emerged as a result. First were my high school friends. Most of them are religious and had been extensively brainwashed by Bella. None took my side except for the one bridesmaid who had already contacted me. Next were the college friends closer to me. None of them had heard Bella's whisper campaign and accepted the evidence immediately. Several of them told me that they had never really liked Bella and that she and that she had shit talked me behind my back. This was news to me, but also a relief because these are the relationships I most don't want to lose. And it looks like I won't. The college friends who were closer to Barrett just didn't really care. A lot of these guys are classic dude bros that are drama adverse. So I'm not shocked they aren't relishing the chance to wade through and litigate the evidence. No hostility coming from these people anymore, but I, but no support either. I can live with that. Bella's nuclear and extended family I have given up on. When I was back for Christmas, I tried to go over to speak to Bella's parents, who were like parents to me also, and they refused to even open the door. I left a letter in their mailbox. It went unacknowledged. In general, things settled down into a new normal, and I just focused on my life and my work and trying to move forward. I went home for the holidays and just hung out with my parents. Life was okay. Then... January 1st, I signed into an older email account that I haven't used in a while to reset a password. In the spirit of New Year digital housekeeping, I started going through old messages intending to close this account for good when I saw an email from my ex with the subject line, I win. I cannot describe the gut punch that I felt when I saw that mail. I freeze up now just writing about it. My ex, let's call him Matthew, was the perfect boyfriend, until he wasn't. He became extremely controlling after our first year of dating. He wanted to control what I wore, what I ate, who I talked to, who I connected with, what I posted on social media, etc. He was very cunning and nuanced with the way he tore me down slowly over time. But then he slipped up. I found out he was cheating, and I woke up enough to get out of there. The breakup was a living nightmare. He refused to allow me to break up with him. We were living together. He installed tracking software on my phone and bugged my car. He had people at my job reporting to him on my movements. I couldn't get away from him. I couldn't hide. He kept showing up. He held my dog hostage. The police were useless because he was never physically violent and was careful not to write his threats down. I was in absolute hell for months, living under the terror that he would show, that he would show up again. I had changed my job, my number, my address, my email account, my social media profiles were private. This was the one place I forgot to block him. The I win email was sent the day after the wedding. He had said that he became close with Bella after we broke up. He called himself the architect of my demise. He said he had fed, he said he had fed Bella's paranoia about me and Barrett and that together they had planned my punishment. He said losing everyone important in my life was what I deserved. And then he said, we should get back together. The fuck he said what? Unless I wanted more unfortunate things like this to keep happening. Yes, he's a delusional prick. It took me a while to collect myself and get my shit together after reading that. I fell apart for a few days. My mom helped pull me back together and now knows the details about what happened with Matthew. 
She connected me with a family friend and attorney that is currently helping me file for a restraining order against Matthew. I tried during the stalking period, but couldn't afford an attorney and was denied. I think with the email evidence and the attorney saying saying things the right way, it will be granted this time, but the hearing is not for another couple of weeks. It's on Zoom, and Matthew will get a chance to be there. I am terrified to see him, even just on screen. If you read this, Matthew, please realize that I am not so terrified that I won't tase the fuck out of you if you ever come near me again. Bravo. Once I had dealt with my own safety, I had the realization that I was in possession of absolute proof that the wedding incident was a setup. I considered blasting it out everywhere, but I still have so much shame about being in an abusive relationship and cannot bring myself to do it. So I decided to just forward it to Barrett with a small amount of explanation. Barrett did not respond to the email. I do not know what happened in Bella and Barrett's household after that, but what I do know is that two nights later, Bella drunk drove... Bella drunk drove her car into my parents' house while attempting to park in their driveway. She ran over their their mailbox. When my parents answered the door, she started screaming about how I'm a home wrecking. Sorry, what a what a word to screw up. It was like right in the the peak of the action, and I'm like I'm gonna fuck it up right now. <sighs> when my parents answered the door, she started screaming about how I'm a home wrecking slut. In her drunken ramblings, my parents were able to figure out that Barrett had left her. Her parents were called over from next door to collect their drunk daughter. My dad said they seemed extremely embarrassed. I know a lot of people here will probably be fist pumping the air that Bella met, met with some karma. I'm not one of them. Matthew is a monster, and I know firsthand how charming and convincing he is. Bella, much like I did, fell for his act. Her happiness has been destroyed by Matthew, too. And I have a really hard time blaming her now that I know he was the one pulling the strings. But she also made her choices. I'm not dumb enough to reconcile it with her either. My number one priority is my safety and anybody who has ties to Matthew is somebody I need to stay far away from. Bella will have to find her own path back to good. There is a role that opened on my team in another country. It's a manager position, which I which would be a promotion for me. And my boss thinks I should apply while it would be while it would be harder having even more distance from my folks. I think being in an entirely new country might help cultivate a new feeling of safety for me, one that I'm sure I can get in one that I'm not sure I can get in this city for now. So that might be what's next for me. I don't really know how to end this properly. I'm just tired. Thanks for the support, Reddit. I probably won't sign into this account again. If you've just joined in, here's the too long don't read. My controlling ex-boyfriend Matthew was feeding Bella's paranoia about Barrett and I. He was involved with planning my punishment with Bella. He sent me an email to an old account bragging about his victory in destroying my relationships and asking to get back together. I forwarded the email to Barrett. Barrett left. Bella drunk drove her car into my parents' mailbox. I'm seeking a restraining order against my ex and am considering leaving the country. That is bonkers. Also, I, I, I know that there are people in chat who have had encounters or relationships with people who are maniacally controlling in a nonviolent way that is hard to hard to prove and hard to get away from. Um, and I feel for you because having someone who, <laughs> who is just a master manipulator and a wizard of Oz to behind the scenes, just turn your entire world upside down with minimal effort is terrifying. And the fact that there are people who are willing to do that just to control you. Like he did all that because he wanted her back. That's the, that's the most terrifying part of all of this. He's like, uh, yeah, this is what happens when you, when you try to stay away from me, now come back or unless you want more bad things like this to happen. The fuck. Hey, you hit the likes goal. Way to go, everybody. Nice. Nice work there. Is Matt the bride's ex? Um, no, OP's ex. And, and no, I don't think they have any kind of, of direct involvement uh, or relationship there, except that they had gotten to know each other while OP was dating Matthew. Whew. Yeah, that is psychological warfare for sure. Um, and man, just, just knowing that, just knowing that there are protections in order for, for physical abuse, 
but not for psychological is tough. Uh, and maybe there are, but it's just a lot. It's a lot more difficult to to prove and to enact. But there's a. It's a lot more common for it to be psychological. And they never quit. Man, uh, some thanks for a quick unholy emotes. Julia Omg cookies. Zoe with the uh, fire there. Adventures with Pam K. Victoria. Uh, Brioni the Strange. Heidi J. Lee Photography. Jilly Five. Doctor Sweets. Brandy. Crystal Morgan. Michelle Heather. Brooke. Jocelyn. Lisi Lex. Latanya. Kayleen Zara Lawson. Uh, Latanya again there. User two eight two. Lots of numbers there. Gina M W. Um, some. Oh, it's Ursula. Look at that. Uh, Ursula with the heart me there as well. Sandra, uh, Gina MW. It's like I said Ursula's name and she appeared. How does that work? Did I summon her? Be not afraid. Jennifer Rose, Jessica, Don Turgeon, Stacy, and Dr. Sweets again in there with some more fire. Uh, SAB, Hector Morales, Hallie Hall, Kathisi, Sandra, uh, Trinity Marie, Aurora, Tony Spark, Wildflower, Ms. Shell Wilson, Mary, TLS, NZ Girl, The Effulgent One, Kate, Adventures with Pam K. Thank you guys so much. Michelle Heather, see you there as well. Grace for Life, Jenny on the Block, Chevy's Mama, uh, Jessica, Amanda, Official Drad Dick, uh, Anna Hartman, Funk Town Ninja, Amber L. Hickey, Unholy Emotes, Local Smiles, Zoe, Julia, OMG Cookies. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciated. Greatly, greatly appreciate that. Uh, we are at 1890 of 3K on the fire right now. We did unlock the other cakes reward story, right? Okay, so I, I will jump to that if that is where you would like to direct me to. Oh, it's 506. Uh, so we probably do need to shut it down. We'll be starting the next stream with the cake story and we'll have to remember this time. You want to do it that way or you want me to go ahead and read it? We'll do what, what way? Okay, uh, cake story is going to be the start of next week's stream. We've got to get back a little bit sooner because we've got some scheduling stuff tonight. Uh, so we've we've got to be we've got to be on time. We've got to be with the schedule here. So we are going to spool up the VIP, but we'll have to we'll have to make sure that we're we're very whatever this is that we're very this with our our time on things. So thank you guys so much for for hanging out next uh, next Wednesday or Sunday. So. Next, the next multi stream will be Sunday night because the Chiefs play in the afternoon. So I'm I'm gonna do the the multi stream Sunday night. Um, there is a chance that I'm too emotionally drained. To, no, it'll be fine. Sunday night, if they end up move like flexing that to a later time, which I don't think they'll do at this point, but Sunday night tentatively is the multi stream. It'll be at 9 p.m. Central and um. And the next TikTok stream will be next Wednesday, 3 p.m. Central. That typically doesn't change. There may be one change to it coming up as we go out of town. Um, and right before the 29th, I'm pretty sure that changes as well. But just just create a recurring calendar event, 3 p.m. every Wednesday. Or uh, you can actually go to dusty-thunder.com and there's an option to subscribe to calendar events there. And you can receive SMS text notifications by signing up there too and it is international so definitely go do that as a reminder uh if you are not already subbed on um on on what am i looking for on youtube you definitely do want to do that because uh we post multiple times per day there that's where all the compilations uh and the podcast episodes come out there as well so definitely check that out the 24 hour stream that we're talking about for the 29th will be based on youtube but we'll have some cut-ins on the on the tiktok side as well so youtube will become increasingly so uh, important for that uh so january 29th at 9 p.m will be oh no it's not monday it's it is sunday the 28th so right Sorry. Yeah, you're all right. You're all right. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the podcast with Bree, a.k.a. Sassy Merlot, came out this past Sunday. I'm I'm editing on uh, the Thunder and Spark episode that's supposed to come out this coming Sunday. So be looking out for that. The VIP live will come up in about 10, 15 minutes and we'll do the Wheel of Thunder spin then. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. It's been a hell of a fun week. Uh, Ned says, I got an O from non-physical left my birth family state to feel safe. I'm happy that you were able to happy to do that. Um, it seems like it would be much more difficult, even on the law enforcement side of things to be able to monitor, substantiate, you know, it's just my goodness. 
Just people, people like that who are willing to just tank your life to control you sucks. Trin, welcome to the Gotcha Fam. The Don L. Rose. In the ranks too. Say that again. We made it to the ranks today. Good job. Uh, music is running, so you have to speak up so they can hear you. We made it to 30 in the ranks. 30, 30 oh, nice, nice work, everybody. Hey, Don Trent, welcome to the Gosh Heckin' Fam. Glad to see you there. Hope to see you in the VIP live starting here shortly. Everybody else, thank you so much. Thank you so much for hanging out here. Greatly appreciate that. Oh, you want that one? Okay. We're gonna. I my glasses. We're gonna bring ourselves out here. I'm gonna put the headphones on the little little space bun bumps here. I can sort of hear. Hey yo, uh, how to VIP? Um, so if you are a member of the storm and you are Nadja, uh, you should get a notification that we've started a VIP live here. Whenever we do start it in 10 to 15 minutes, um, if you don't get a notification, you can come back to to my profile and just refresh it, and it should show you that I'm live. And uh, in if you're not a member, I think you're able to jump in for a preview of the live. If you are a member, you're able to officially jump in and start and start chatting there too. Hey yo, yeah, this visor doesn't go down like the other one do. This is the uh, this is the super authentic original OG one. I think Buzz Aldrin actually pulled this out of his closet and loaned it to us. Uh, Tony said it will go through Pittsburgh or three. Oh yeah, for sure. Ready to retire. Yeah, re- ROs don't do a whole... But it's, it's not ultimate protection, but at least it's a speed bump, right? At least it's something that's there. Um, and if somebody violates that, the, the punishment just gets harsher for them. It doesn't, it doesn't ultimately protect your life, but it's something. Yeah, thanks so much, Jessica. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, what a hell of a long story, too. We survived it. We did it. But man, those people are out there. That needs to be... Like that needs to be a mini series. It needs to be like a limited, a limited. Um, I don't know what they call that now, but a limited run series. That's like you. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's it says on vintage, vintage. Thank you, thank you so much, Legal. Uh, Emily Shales, Alejandra, greatly appreciate it. Francis, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chevy's mama, thank you, greatly appreciate it, Ms. Barry. More long stories, okay. We'll take a note to that. Um, there are more long stories over on the YouTube side. If uh, if you're one of the members on YouTube, the member exclusives are typically best of register updates, which are long, long stories um, and long, crazy stories. So that's one of the perks of the YouTube membership. There. Lifetime movie, network movie. Yeah, absolutely. Get easy. Sandra, thanks so much. Over there in Latvia. Heck yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you in the VIP here soon. Thanks for hanging out with us. Have a fantastic Askonaut free week. I'm dancing with the, with the helmet on. It's happening. <laughs>